Mafia Town is very fast asleep. USB connection jump scare. Hello! Okay, I gotta lower this in my own ears for a second. There. La 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 la. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Hello, blank screen. Give me a minute. I'm adjusting some stuff. There we go. Also reset my head position. There we go. Move the thing. So many bells and whistles. I know. Ah, and also uh, Amp Gaming, who is that one hat kid over in the Discord. Hello! Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the casualness. Bendy fan. Been watching some of the Snatcher Plays live streams after seeing um, do Chapter 1 of Poppy Playtime. I thought, wonder if he'll do Chapter 2 or 3 in the next Snatcher Plays streams. Also, hi. Um, no, I don't think I'm going to be doing any of the Poppy Plays um, games, like, moving forward. Because, like, it was, it was fun at first. But uh, then, like, it, like, so anybody that did NFTs back in the, uh, the time when it was, like, really hot cakes at the time... Um, I've kind of blacklisted a bunch of people, and I'm trying to actively remember the ones that did. And I remember Poppy Playtime was one of them. <laughs> so, for me personally, that that is like a very clear, like, sort of litmus test. <laughs> you know, just being like, did you support NFTs? Hmm, well, too bad on you. I think they did stop doing those, but I agree with your reason. Well, it's just like... I can understand. I can understand a circumstance where somebody is, like, convinced. Because there was a lot of uh, groups out there that were, like, actively trying to convince people. And they were just saying, like, hey, hey, you should jump on the new hotness. Holy shit. Like, you should. Like, it's going to make you so much money. And your fans are going to love it. Like, it, it's, it's amazing business opportunity. You should do it. And, like, I, I do understand that, that there are circumstances where some companies and some people have run into that circumstance uh while they you know and while i understand that i do feel it shows kind of a lack of care and like attention to what you're slapping your uh name on property wise and i don't think i'm okay with that so uh yeah me personally like <laughs> nfts are basically my way of uh telling whether or not you have like a good head on your shoulders basically um, yeah, I, on that principle, the Poppy Playtime stuff from this point onwards, uh, unless they very actively come out and say, like, wow, that was a really, really stupid idea. We apologize severely. Oh, my God. What were we thinking? Um, I don't think I'm going to be doing any business with anybody like that. And even if, like, even if somebody does do that, uh, I'm still going to be a little bit sore. <laughs> I'm still going to be sort of, like, uh, side-eyeing the main, like, hmm. Really? Yeah. <laughs> really? Have an update on my inactivity and about my disappearance. I mean, hey, you don't be you don't need to be too specific about like, you know, why you've been here and gone and things like that. That's fine. And in fact, like, that's a normal thing. That's a normal thing to be like, you know, in a in a Discord or like in a fandom and then going away for long periods of time and then coming back. Like I don't know if I want you to get, like, too uh, specific about that, especially if it's something personal. Um, just letting you know, you, you don't gotta say anything. All right? Just be careful on that. Uh, also, Nova says, how am I? Doing pretty good on my end. Oh, also, um, to answer more of your question, uh, Bendy fan, by the way, uh, actually, Snatcher Play 6 is more or less kind of the last yearly installation of Snatcher Plays that I have done um, for a couple of reasons. One of them being that I feel like the formula has not really evolved all that much and I don't have many things I want to do with it at this point. Uh, and two, I have been severely backlogged on both like editing those streams as well as a lot of other things. And uh, I don't really want to put my time into things that I know I'm not going to be able to like actively deliver on in a fast, uh, you know, in, in a fast capacity. I've been distracted by so many other certain personal projects uh, that I have been working on, as well as just a bunch of other things that have got my attention IRL. So, 
Uh, I just feel like we've we've done six snatcher play streams, man. <laughs> At this point, I'm kind of uh, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of exhausted with it. Not to say that I will never do a snatcher stream ever again, and not to say that I won't be doing any like snatcher related content or any hat and time related content. Still love it to death. It's just kind of one of those like I think I'm gonna go ahead and move in the direction of not promising a new hat and time stream or a snatcher play stream every single year. Because I, I feel like I would like to do a stream like that when I feel the time is right, you know. Bendy and the Ink Machine? Maybe. There is the Brio. Hello. Welcome. Anyway, I'm sitting here with some soda and also with uh, some water and also with some crackers because I wanted to have a little bit of a snack tonight. I say a little bit of a snack. Soda's got so many freaking calories. I'm trying to watch my weight. Um, and I'm trying to watch, like, what I eat. Like, sometimes successfully. Sometimes not. <laughs> anyway. Uh, on the subject of, like, you know, side projects and things that uh, I am focusing my, my time and attention into, I did recently... I splurged and I bought myself something that... Uh, actually, hold on a second. Let me go ahead and jump into the voice call just so that people who want to poke me can poke me. Hopefully, I've got all the audio stuff set up properly. Um, yeah, it looks like my mic is set up properly. I'm just I'm going to cross my fingers that uh, <laughs> it's not going to like, you know, people, people are going to jump in and not immediately break my audio. Bendy and the Ink Machine, including its sequel, Bendy and the Dark Revival. Uh, I've heard about Bendy. Haven't really, like, looked too deeply into it. What would happen... Uh, wait. What do you think would happen if ink was uh, in your body like someone poured it in? I think it would look really cool and swirly at first, and then it would just, like, sort of poof out. And I would become, like, you know, weird highlighter blue. Not that I'm not already highlighter blue. Maybe if somebody mixed in, like, red ink, I'll suddenly become purple. Huh. Hey... <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> Grape flavored bit. Anyway. Right. On the subject of uh, side related projects that uh, are taking my attention, I went and I did a splurge. Look, I've been talking about this for a really long period of time. I've talked about the fact that I have wanted this for a really long time. And I finally just went ahead and did it. So. You know. Yeah, I did the thing. <laughs> I went and got one. I've been teasing it for a really long time, and finally I, I have the thing. And I'm excited about it. I like it a lot. It's cool. It's fun. Is that a 3D printer? Indeed it is. Um, when did a little bit of research on that one. 3D printer! Uh, hello, there's a Kyle. How's it going? 3D it's print going. Yeah. Hey, it's it's a third or perp. So how's it going? Mm. Just got something to eat. I took a boy, just as you asked me. Oh, oh, nice. What are you eating? Rum. We have think. <laughs> what? Oh, I, 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 that cut out for a second. What? Ramen. Oh, ramen. Okay, right, of course. It's you. What am I talking about? I'm gonna say, Ram, what do you think? Fbay says 3D print a bit. Oh, don't worry. As soon as I can figure out, um, you know, a good way for me to be able to do that, I'm absolutely going to be printing some sort of a bit. For sure. Discord mod in training. Uh, the stuff that I've seen. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. D Discord moderators, I, I do not... Um, I do not envy your position. I currently like run a Discord, and uh, sometimes it's it's drama, sometimes it's filth, sometimes it's uh, it's trolling. Boy, it is some terrible stuff. Have I ever had udon? I think I would like it. Um, isn't udon basically just like thick ramen? Yep, basically. I've had ramen, and I would not be against having udon. Oh, I know. I saw some horrors. Yeah. 
Well, here's the thing. I've been on the internet ever since I was, um, I want to say like 10 years old. And, you know, that's at least a solid 20 years. 20 years on the internet, and I have seen some shit. It is scary stuff. I grew up on Newgrounds. That should give you a good idea. <clears throat> hey, I figured out this really cool feature on Steam. Oh, yeah? All right, go to your library. Uh, give me a second. Library. Go to Stardew Valley. Yeah. Click the play button. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the ever-loving hell up. I can play Stardew whenever I freaking want. <laughs> God, you're laughing. <laughs> what an amazing concept. Video game playing. <laughs> Epic said, I immediately looked up if anyone had 3D printed a Snatcher. They have. Oh, absolutely. See, right now, I'm currently in sort of the... Um, I, I, I'm in the, the testing phase where I'm trying to figure out, like, what this thing is capable of doing. Uh, to give you a good idea of what this is, it it's, comes from a, uh, a company called Flashforge. And um, I thought about maybe making my own 3D printer because there are sort of DIY things that you can do with 3D printers. But um, I found out it's a lot simpler and uh, a lot, like, it's basically just as expensive to just go ahead and buy a pre-made 3D printer. Um, we've reached that point in 3D printer uh, technology where they're being mass produced and it's really easy to just go out, buy one, and have it delivered to you. Um, so, you know, like as much as I do like the whole DIY nature of it, I just decided, you know, no, I'm gonna take a bunch of the, um, I'm gonna take a bunch of like the experimental stuff and the elements out and I'm just gonna buy a printer that I know works one that I could get serviced in the uh, event that I needed to that kind of thing I'd probably buy one how much would it cost roughly well this unit right here the uh, flash forge adventure 5m costs about three hundred dollars that was one of the reasons why I bought it I was just like oh my god <laughs> I found that this technology has gotten like stupidly uh, stupidly cheap just three, three, 300 smackaroos. Ha bang. Done. Now, on their website, they advertise that the thing is 500, but you know, you know, that's like an intentional marketing markdown to make you think that, like, oh, I'm going to get something super ridiculously expensive. No, you're not. No, it's, it's, they're trying to play, like, you know, m dollar signs on you. So. Oh, App says, I have a 3D pen, and I made a weapon from Cookie Run Kingdom. I shouldn't have this power. Hey, that's freaking cool. Also, Duma says, I made it to the stream. Hello. Anyway, so, yeah, I bought that. And uh, then I, um, I, so right now I'm currently in, good lord, my, my, my hand tracker is not happy today. Anyway. Right now, I'm currently in sort of the testing phase and also um, the experimental phase. I'm trying to figure out how to do it and how to uh, have the most success with the unit. And so far, I've had quite a few failures um, in that I'm trying desperately to figure out how to make stuff stick to the printer bed. It is so frustrating <laughs> because either like it fails out the gate or I let it go for a short period of time and then it like fails halfway through. I'm like, ah! So, that's my frustration. And I'm trying to figure out what methods are the best for me. You know. Okay, I know what your people's favorite song for Billy Bust Up. Um, well, right now, come on, can. Right now, I haven't really listened to a whole lot of Billy Bust Up songs, and the only one that I have like intently listened to is I've Had Enough of You. So I'd have to say that's my personal favorite right now. But I know that there's many that have been released so far. How different is it to make models for a printer than, like, your average model, let's say? Um, are you talking just, like, you know, if you're... Give me a second. I think I'm going to clean this, um... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean my, uh, my hand tracker because it is... I don't know if it's, like, just the fact that it is unclean. Maybe it's because I have a slack shirt and it's, uh, dangling a little bit, but... 
you you need cleaning. So far, I think all around two songs have been released. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I know there's a million gruesome ways to die, and I also know that there is. Uh, uh, yeah, again, I've had enough of you. That's about it. There we go. Anyway, how different it is to make models for uh, a printer than like your average model, let's say. Well, um, when it comes to 3D modeling, you need to kind of keep in mind the convenience of like, yeah, like you, you need to model things with the idea and the intent that it's going to be 3D printed. And so because of that, you have to kind of make decisions about like, okay, how do I want this pose to work? Uh, what supports do I want to use to like hold certain parts of the, the model up? Like if you have an arm up here, you know, where are you going to be putting supports just so that it, um, you know, it, it stays in place, which these are things that you can do in like um, software after you're done modeling the thing. So for the most part, the modeling um, portion of it is not too different. Really, you can just like, if you use Blender, um, you can take whatever model that you want and you can um, just re just send it off as an STI file and bada bing, bada bang, you got yourself like a file that will work in most like 3D slicer programs, which the slicer is the thing that helps like prepare, prepare 3D models for the sake of printing. Um, and then, then you have to go into all sorts of different methods to try and figure out what is the best method for printing whatever it is that you're currently printing? Um, so here, I'm going to go ahead and um, hide that picture there. I'm going to bring up a picture of something that I have recently uh, printed and have had like actual success with. Uh, that would be this guy. This is like a work in progress picture, but this is complete. And also... Intentionally, I have gone and not colored it or gotten colored uh, filament because I don't have it. In retrospect, I probably should have. <laughs> Oops. But anyway, does anybody recognize what that is? I want to see. Is there anybody in the chat that sees that and can immediately go, oh, is that... Fun hell to deal with. 3D hell. Pizza! <laughs> you got it. It's pizza. But can you can you call out what kind of pizza? And I don't I don't mean like anchovy or anything. I'm talking like, where does this pizza hail from? No, not pineapple pizza. No, but get out. <laughs> banned. <laughs> Immediate ban. Get out. You get an internet cookie if you can manage to guess where this pizza hails from. Pepperoni. Funny enough, there is no pepperoni on this thing from, uh, you know, from the visuals. I don't like pineapple pizza, but it looks like pineapple on pizza. Nah, not quite. Not quite. Now again, if I were smart, I should have colored, uh this particular print it should have been the color red there's your hint that's what the, that's the color of what this particular print is supposed to be so what pizza would have this much red and this much sauce and keep in mind it, it's gonna have to go inside of like you know chicago deep dish oh you know i wish <laughs> Think toy. I should probably have like um, an example picture ready to go. Wow, I'm getting a lot of examples here. None of them what I'm looking for. Ah, wait, wait, there it is. There it is. Found it. Fish on pizza? Yeah, I'm out of ideas. <laughs> I mean, okay, so here's another one. This is like my childhood nostalgia. All right. 
This pizza comes from something very specific within my childhood nostalgia. Chuck E. Cheese? No, not Chuck E. Cheese. FA says uh, TMMT. No, it's not TMNT. It's, it, <laughs> we're not going for type of pizza. I mean, like, where does this pizza come from? Property. Let me, uh, I'll read out the, the hints again. Now, again, toy pizza. And again, this particular 3D print is red colored. Like, all these pieces that you're seeing right here is supposed to be red. And then a bunch of those little flakes on the inside are yellow. And then the um, the circular things uh, where, you know, those spots are, those are supposed to be green. And then on the outside, it's supposed to be yellow. Can you figure it out? Not that, Natty. F they got it. <laughs> FBA wins. Da 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 da. It's Lego pizza. Lego. <laughs> Check it out. Yeah, look at that. Hey, look, I'm a Lego pizza now. <laughs> but yeah, it's Lego pizza. Yay! What I win? You win a digital internet cookie. Uh, I don't have it currently available on me. But yeah, I'm 3D printing this thing. Um. So yeah. I probably should have gotten colored filament. You know what? In retrospect, I realize I really should have picked up more colored filaments. Uh, I didn't. I picked up some very specific colored filaments. Um, and uh, But th this, right now I'm currently printing out only in gray just because I'm currently in the experimental phase and uh, I don't want to use any particular filaments that would be a little bit more expensive or, you know, a, basically a valuable color. Uh, so for now, yeah, we're just going for uh, printing out and gr in gray and figuring out what is the most appropriate way to print out certain things. But anyways, uh, this print was actually a success. Uh, however, in order for it to be a success, and we were talking about this earlier, there are different methods of printing out uh, certain things on a printer bed. Um, now, if you've got a 3D print that doesn't really require any extra like supports or anything like you can print out things that don't require any supports if, if they're stable enough on their own um so if you've got something like that you can basically just skip all um the prep stage however for something like this print right here it, this gave me so much goddamn trouble i swear to god and the reason why it gave me so much trouble was because well, look at how many, like, little circles are attached to this thing. Like, it, it had to meticulously, like, draw out each and every one of those circles. And all those circles had to, like, adhere to the printer bed perfectly in order for them to have worked properly. And if they didn't work properly, that would mean that um, the entirety of the 3D print is ruined. Because <laughs> now the 3D printer is going to try and print in places where uh, the filament didn't stick properly... And, you know, it's just making assumptions for where, like, you know, the, the filament's supposed to be. But it's not there. And so now it's just dragging filament everywhere and then dragging it over to other places on the, uh, the 3D print and ruining other parts of the 3D print. Like, 3D printing is obnoxious sometimes. Um, Sounds like a problem. So in order to, like, solve this, there are a couple of things that you can do. And the solution that I eventually went for was the raft method, which is... Annoying. <laughs> so the raft method is basically, it uses up a little bit more filament, but um, it's worth it if you've got something really intricate and stupid like this. And if you have a printer bed that's just giving you a lot of problems. How it works is um, it maps out where all of the pieces are of your 3D print. And then it draws out a very, like, simple geometric, like, print bed you can see it underneath this uh this print right here like if i if i zoom in here right down to like there like you can see it started out with like a little bit of a layer of uh of printer material at the bottom and then it made a more simplified version of the uh the printer material uh above it and then after that 
it started actually printing out the, um, you know, the sauce slices properly. Now, the benefits to this is that it means your filament has a lot more room to actually stick to the bed. Because um, the bed can be kind of slippery sometimes. But um, the material itself, like, it sticks to itself really well. So if you lay out a sheet of material in preparation, yeah, it's not really going to wiggle around anywhere. The negative is that after it's done printing, you have to go and remove those pieces from that filament that was printed. And um, for me personally, in my circumstance for this, it meant I had to like painstakingly like take all the individual little fibers that had printed on these uh, these slices. Like I have one in front of me right now. I had to like tear off every single one of the individual little fibers that, uh... here, let me, I I'm gonna zoom in again real quick. Now you see all those lines? Now imagine that's like, have you, have you ever seen like fiber optic, um, you know, little clear fiber optic things? Uh, like for fiber optic, optic lamps, like, th like those little plastic strands that like emit light and like glow at the ends. I hope I'm describing this properly. Um, that's kind of the exact kind of dimension as those, except maybe a little bit thinner. And I had to go and like remove those things like one by one by one off of the back of each of those. So believe me when I say, don't do raft method unless you absolutely have to. While I was printing this, I was just like, oh my god, this is so simple. None of the pieces moved. Everything is exactly where I wanted it to be. This is easy. Why don't I just do raft for everything? It'll be a waste of material, but I don't give a crap. <laughs> I have learned. I have learned. Forbode. Forbode. Oh, also, um, another thing is that uh, the, the back ends of these things, they get a little bit rough. Like, they're a little bit iffy on, on the surface, which I believe, if I printed this properly, the rough part of this is going to be sitting on the bottom where no one's going to see it. Uh, but if I want to be really finicky about this, I might want to go ahead and take this and uh, get some sandpaper and sand them down a little bit. Just so that they're nice and smooth on the bottom. I, I don't know if I need to, but... That is a potential thing that I'm going to have to do in the future. <laughs> and it's all because I had to go with raft. So, uh... Raft. Raft. So don't do raft unless you absolutely have to, okay? Like, print things that will actually keep your sanity. Um... For, I, I actually have some ideas for a couple of things that I'm planning on printing. Like, I had some ideas for some things literally, like, ten minutes before the stream. And I can't do it until I'm done, like, experimenting with gray material first. But once I'm done with that, oh, oh, I got some ideas. I, I got some fun things I want to do. So, yeah. Um, anything else I want to talk about in reference to the, uh, the printer itself? Well, again, $300, not bad. Um, oh, I am trying to be very mindful about how much electricity that I'm using. Uh, because these things can be electricity suckers if you use them too often. It's literally like a, an appliance that, uh, generates a bunch of heat, you know, like, and consistently. And it can run for several hours. So. Uh, either sandpaper or a heat that can semi-melt the plastic again, I, uh, use the heat method. Oh, you know, good point. Um, I wonder how that, ugh. Well, we'd have, you'd have to come up with a way to do it, it so that, like, it only heats the bottom. Um, which is tough on something like this, because, like... Yeah. Honestly, I think I would go for the sandpaper method, personally. Because I'm a little bit worried about accidentally warping these pieces. Like, these pieces are supposed to fit together like a puzzle. Um, and if I accidentally... If I accidentally warp these things in some way that makes them uh, a different shape, they might not fit together properly. So, uh, I think I might go with sandpaper. It's abrasive, but, you know. Uh, may I have some voice acting advice? 
I think I gave some voice acting advice uh, the previous stream. A lot of voice acting advice, in fact. Um, I don't really know what uh, advice I could possibly give. Like, everybody's different, and everybody's trying to do a little bit of something different uh, in terms of, like, what voices they are good at, what voice they want to do. Like, what's, what's something in general? Uh, here, here's one. Drink plenty of liquid. <laughs> like hydrate i mean in general you you people should be hydrating out in the um you know out in the chat Hyd hydrate drink water mm. bonus soda no not bonus soda that's gonna <laughs> it's gonna dehydrate you no just water in fact funny enough i know you're joking but soda is actually a really bad thing to drink if you're going to be doing voice acting um because it's a bunch of extra sugar and like high fructose corn syrup and that's gonna gum up your vocal cords yeah so yeah that it's actually a good idea not to do that um let's see what what other what other good tips um bonus boba says no <laughs> mm, no boba i have not actually had boba actually now that i think about it i should at some point Anyway, what else could I... Oh, hey, um, I got another picture here. Here. Uh, I did go ahead and I printed off the thing. Anybody who knows 3D printers, you know exactly the thing I'm talking about. I made it. Because <laughs> you know you have to. An egg holder? Uh, no. I made the funny boat. Funny boat. Funny boat. You know the one. The one that, like, everybody has to 3D print for the first time. Mmm. Give me Da Benchy. <laughs> Haven't printed uh, that with my profile, but I uh, should. Where can I find a file? Um, printed that with your profile. Are you talking like with the 3D pen? I don't know. See, here's the thing. I don't know what a 3D pen is capable of. That's the thing. For a sec, I thought that was the Mafia bolt. <laughs> mafia! Plus, it probably doesn't help that we're currently listening to, like, you know, Nyakas and music. Oh, printer. Um, my printer just came with it, honestly. Like... I found it inside of the files, so I'm sure that it's probably just, like, easily findable in places. I, just, I would just look up, like, a website that, like, you know, gives 3D printed um, items and just uh, pop them in there. Oh, I should say, um, if any of you are really, really bored and have some ideas for some things that I could possibly try and 3D print on my 3D printer, and if you happen to know some things that are uh, fun... 3D print uh, projects, let me know. Because, uh, hey, who knows? You, you, I might end up printing it, and you might end up seeing it in physical form. Possibly. Not sure you know much about Mech Warrior. How much do you know? Not really, not much. Alright. <clears throat> in the game, there's a mech called the Urban Mech. The it's urban all you need to know. And, the, or, and somebody made a, or a 3D print model of the bottom half, and it's an egg holder. I'm gonna look this up. What the fuck? <laughs> I found it's it. Just, it's the bottom half of the urban mech, and all it does is hold an egg, but once you put an egg in it, it kind of looks like the urban mech. <laughs> I found it. <laughs> <laughs> Battletech Urban Mech Egg Cup is what it's called. That's amazing. <laughs> also, the legs are uh, are articulated. Is that That's right? That's weird. That's weird for a uh, egg yeah. holder. You can make it like you can like bend the. Uh, you can bend oh, the arms I... and the legs. Oh, it has arms. Legs. Yeah, it has arms. Oh, and somebody painted it. Uh, it looks like the base color is gray. Makes sense. <laughs> I'm gonna keep this up on a tab. 
I don't know whether or not I'll print it, but um, I, I will definitely think about it. Toaster stress test? Um, give me a minute. I'm going to pull that up. Um, the torture toaster. Okay. Interesting. Guys at Edge Tech challenged me to make a torture test that would be fun and interesting, and this ridiculous thing is where I ended up. This will test your print tolerances, overhang handling, and most of all, your bed adhesion. Oh, friggin'. <laughs> that is terrifying. What would happen if you 3D printed Snatcher Crab? I'm not gonna say that I already had plans for that, but uh, <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> He's not going to say that directly. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to say that outright. I'm not going to say that I already went and bought a whole bunch of, uh, of, uh, you know, I, I forget what it's called. Like, actually, come to think of it, what, what, what is that? Hold on, hold on. Here, uh, I, I'm going to go and look at my Amazon listings, and I'm going to tell you that, yeah, uh, it, it's not like I went and bought a bunch of uh, burnt pipe. Uh, titanium PLA filament because it looks uh, like a really nice shade of purple that would be perfect for it or anything. No, I I, I totally didn't do that at all. That Ever. Is, that, that all is time. Not a thing. I would never do this. Okay. Don't don't allege me of doing these things. Snap army real? No, no, it's not. Don't worry about it. First of all, I'm going to have to come up with, like, a method for, uh, actually, like, what, 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 so now that I have done a whole bunch of 3D printing, it has occurred to me that I'm going to have to come up with, like, various ways of printing these things, uh, that doesn't make me tear my hair out in anger. So, um, you know. Print something called, oh yeah, I think I've seen Switch Toaster. Mini Toaster, but then you put, like, Nintendo Switch Games chips into it, and then it looks like toast. I saw that, um, and I thought about maybe picking that up and, like, trying it, but here's the thing. Maybe I, I, I'm just thinking a little bit too practical when it comes to this stuff, because I look at that, and I think to myself that, like, I would prefer to keep my Nintendo Switch cartridges inside of their original boxes, personally. Like, I, I am one of those guys that I do like having my Nintendo Switch collection in, like, nice boxes and on the wall and it kind of scares me whenever i uh don't have the uh the switch boxes like like when i take my nintendo switch cartridges out and like for travel or something and i put them in my travel case and stuff i, I get really paranoid because i'm just like oh god oh god i'm taking this tiny thing and i'm leaving the big box behind oh god i they, they need to be in their home <laughs> so you know it, like as cool as the um the 3d print toaster thing is as well as like a lot of other things are i feel like if i printed something like that i would want to keep a switch cartridge inside the switch toaster and like <laughs> i would be very torn i want a needle felt a snap one day <laughs> someone say no i'm not gonna say no i can have mixed boba interesting I don't even have the original box for the Switch itself, let alone any of the games. Um, I don't have my original Switch box, but I do have, like... I mean, I, I have all of the, um, you know, all, all the original game cases for, like, all of the, uh, the Switch cartridges. And they look so good on my wall! They, they look so good in, like, on, in my collection. Um, here, what, what was that one thing? I, I want to look up this, uh, this one 3D print project. That looked really freaking cool that I was like, the, the temptation was high. Um, here, let me look up uh, Nintendo Switch 3D print. Actually, funny enough, um, here, let's get it. Thingiverse, neat. Uh, I'm just gonna look up like Nintendo. There's some really cool Nintendo-related stuff out there. All right. 
Is it located on Thingiverse? God, I hope so. If there's a Nintendo Switch, like, drink cozy. Why? I don't Point? Not sure. Uh, there's a stand for a Nintendo 64 controller, which is kind of funny. I'm just going to look up, like, 3D print websites, because there's there's one particular one that I saw that I was like, ooh, hey. Maybe it was on printables? There we go. Game box. Why is my voice to text not working for me today? Ah, I see. Love to see the pin test. Um, yes, I'm recommending stress test because it's important. I mean, hey, yeah, stress testing is important. Easy, good thing to see what your uh, printer is capable of. Anyway. Um, here. Oh, I typed this in wrong. There we go. Oh, there's plenty of 3D prints that you can do of, like, the Nintendo logo. Which, all right, cool, I suppose. There's one particular thing, like, I'm trying to find this. Oh, yeah. Um, so I did find a 3D print for the Nintendo 64 logo. Um, and that is on my list of to-dos. But, oh, you want to hear something that was really frustrating? Um... While I was, I, I was, I was running like a test print for that one, and uh, while I was printing it, I was just like, okay, let's get a nice solid ad like adhesion to the base, okay? Nice solid connection to the base so that we can have like a good start to the 3D print. Let's do this. Let's do the thing. And then it started doing like a really good adhesion job on one of the uh, of the bases. I was just like, okay, cool, getting somewhere, looks good. And then it moved over to one of the other ones. And then the thing just started spazzing the hell out in, like, this small little uh, portion of it. And I was like, the fuck? Why? Like, I mean, clearly, this is not doing well. <laughs> like, it's it's not level at all, and it looks disgusting. Why? Um, and so I said, okay, you know what? Um, cancel the print. I have to go and check on this. And so... I went and I checked the 3D model in my, um, in my, like, software just to see, like, if there was anything inconsistent with, like, the, the way that it was modeled, but may maybe, maybe that's why. Turns out, the person who did the 3D model for the Nintendo 64 logo put a watermark at the bottom of the goddamn model. Right underneath, on the printer bedside. It's like, fuck off with that. Guns. <laughs> I like. I get the idea that you want to try and like you know, push your stuff and push your name, being like, hey, I'm the one that did the work on this. But like, it's the N64 logo. You could probably find 3D models of the N64 logo out right now in super low poly, and then just like, you know, merge it over to being a 3D model, like, for the modern era. How much work is that? If, if anything, it takes more work to go and add your freaking name to the bottom of the N logo than it did for, like, making the N logo. Ew! <laughs> Not only that, you are ruining the, uh, the, like, actual 3D printable capability of this thing. I don't know whether or not anybody complained about it. Who knows? But, like... I know for a fact, like, I don't usually, I am not one that would, um, I don't support the idea of, like, removing watermarks on people's art, okay? Don't do that, that's scumbaggy. But in this circumstance, with the fact that, like, it's clearly stupidly derivative, and also, you're literally destroying the 3D print, I kinda have to. Like, but... Here. Okay, I found the um, I found the picture of the thing that like almost made me want to go and uh, 3D print this thing. Oh, 
Is this a WebP? <sighs> or wait, is this an HTML document? What is this? Save it as an image, you scum. No, it's WebP. Well then, okay. I think OBS works with WebP, so that's yeah, fine. Anyway, take a look at this thing. Look at that. I was very tempted for this one because, oh, that would have looked so cool. So yeah, if, if, if you don't have an idea of what this is, uh, it's, it's a carousel and like you spin it and at a certain part of the carousel, it pops the game up and then you can like, you know, it's weird. Like, you know, you, you, you turn it back and forth. It's just like, and then you can see the game and it's just like, oh, looks neat. Couple of things stopped me though. Number one, my whole issue of like, but I'm gonna wanna put all my games into these and then I'm gonna like feel bad about the fact that I could. I, my, I like my collection. I like it on the shelf. Second of all, um, I'm curious like, after a long extended period of time of putting the games into this little holster thing and spinning them around a bunch, do you think it's gonna wear down the bottoms a little bit? Probably not. Like, I have to imagine they're probably a similar sort of like it like probably a similar if not weaker version of plastic than the one on the cartridge so well, yeah. i ultimately just decided that no nah, I, I i'm not gonna print that one but god i wanted to <laughs> holy crap i wanted to anyway so there's a couple of other things that i'm thinking about printing um one th so uh, and a couple of things that i just recently had ideas for uh, involve using some gold filament and uh, well I mean not real gold I'm talking like you know color I, I'm not that bougie um, but you know gold silk style filament and I think I've got some ideas for some things that I really want to print with that and I'm super excited and super jazzed right now I'm sculpting and I'm wishing so much uh, wanting to do something else are you talking just like you're sculpting and you're just like, ew, this is boring? I feel that. Spin the Nintendo wheel to decide what to play. Oh, Minecraft with a Switch, ew. <laughs> Depends on the material. Oh, you know what's one other thing? Um... This is something that I didn't really think about too hardcore when it came to uh, getting the 3D printer. You don't really think about ventilation with this stuff, but ventilation is important. Sculpting in Blender, not necessarily boring, but oh my God, it is um, a chore at times. It's like my third attempt at sculpt. I could see that. Anyway, um, no, I went and I looked it up a little bit later because I think it was my brother. I mentioned the 3D printer and he was just like, you have proper ventilation in there? And I was like, what? He's like, well, I mean, you're ment you're melting a whole bunch of plastic and that's probably throwing up a bunch of fumes in the air. Like, I've heard of some stories about how apparently that is something that happened. Is that going to be harmful to you if you don't have, like, you know, any filtration in there? And I was like, you got a point. I'm going to look that up. <laughs> and I did look it up. And, um... There is no outright reports of what happens after exposure to um, the PLA filament involved with 3D printing. Um, if anything, PLA is one of the more non-toxic uh, plastics that you can use when it comes to 3D printing, and one of like the one of the safer ones, one of the easier ones to work with. Uh, however, j you know, just because it's safer to work with doesn't necessarily it's safe. So one thing that you should probably do when it comes to any type of 3D printing is that you should set up proper ventilation and uh, proper filtration within the room that you are doing the um, the 3D prints in. Now they they threw a lot of words around, being, you know, like lung cancer, and I was just like, yeah, that's terrifying. If that is the case, that'd be very scary. PLA and ABS are the only two my 3D printer pens, oh, 3D pens will do. Mm. All right. I forget. I think the reason why um, PLA is the safer option is because PLA melts at a much lower temperature. Um, for other types of uh, plastics, you may need something a little bit hotter. And I think that's, 
That's kind of one of the reasons why, if I remember right. Um, anyway, uh, because of this, I have actually, I have actively reorganized the, um, the space with that 3D printer is currently occupying. Uh, like I've moved some tables around and I've taken the 3D printer and put it more towards the window. Um, also, it is the exact same room that has uh, a, a HEPA filter, like that's sitting directly next to the dang thing. So in the event I need to, uh, you know, in the event I need to run this thing, I, you know, I, I have plenty of different places and ways of ventilating that, uh, that machine. 190 degrees um, to 210 degrees for PLA. Mm. Now, uh, what was the other thing? Oh, here's another interesting fact. If you wanted to spend an extra $200, uh, that one machine that I was showing off a little earlier, this one, uh, this is the... Uh, this, I'm not being sponsored in any way, shape, or form. I would just like to say for the freaking record. I just bought it, and so far it's kind of doing okay. It's doing okay for me. I don't know whether or not it's like it's fantastic. We, we will see how long it lasts and whether or not I need to have some assistance with it or fixing some things. But um, anyway, uh, so th this is like the Adventure 5M. Uh, there is another version of this, and is the Adventure 5M Pro uh, for an extra two hundred dollars. And for $200, you get a couple of extra things, including it is a full enclosure, completely closed in. It has uh, HEPA filters built directly in. So while it's like rotating the air through, uh, it is actively like, you know, it's not kicking off any extra fumes that it shouldn't be. Um, it is also like, it has a camera built in so that you can monitor the prints as they are happening. So that's another thing. So like very temperature controlled, very uh, air controlled. And honestly, it sounds like it is the best way, in my opinion, to uh, print things in as much of a vacuum as possible. Glow in the dark filaments are cool though. Once you start, you can't stop. And that comes from a glow in the dark filament enjoyer, says Amp. Is um, is ABS the only way that you can do that, or like, is there PLA versions that do glow in the dark? You say glow in the dark, and the first thing I immediately think of, because we were talking about cancer not too long ago, <laughs> you know, like lung cancer, PLA. Um, yeah, like we were talking. <laughs> the first thing I think is like the the Radion girls or whatever the heck. Uh, do, do, do you guys know that story? Kyle, do you know that story? Cap. What? Hi. I was just saying, do you know the Radeon girl story? No. Oh. I was just checking. Um Okay, for, for people in the chat that don't know, ra the Radeon girls is basically like um there was th there were a bunch of women who were working in this factory and the factory uh specialized in uh it specialized in like glow in the dark clock hands and stuff and you know making stuff with glow in the dark material uh and the way that they did that back in the day was using like you know basically radioactive material and they told them that it was perfectly safe turns out it wasn't shock what a time um, yeah right uh and like it took forever for them to finally get some legal justice for it like to the point that most of the uh, the gals that were a part of the those factories had already fallen like extremely ill to their conditions. Uh, m a lot of them had died, and most of the uh, the gals who were left were b basically hobbling on one leg. Like you know, like ba just death is just knocking at their doorstep. And uh, eventually, they finally cleared them and just like, okay, we're sorry. And then handed some money over to them and their next of kin. And just like, just being like, oopsie doopsies, we shouldn't have done the thing. Um, but yeah, now now there's a whole bunch of watches out there that have radioactive material that are, um, I think they're collectible, but also you don't want to have them around you for too long. <laughs> also, well, actually, funny enough, 
The clock hands themselves are not stupidly radioactive, because that's a very tiny amount of radium that is uh, on those clock hands. You don't want to be around even a small amount of it, but that small amount for a brief period of time ain't going to hurt much. I suppose it's a watch, so you are going to be wearing it 24-7, but you know. Um, however, the, the gals who were working with this radium constantly, I, they were kind of screwed in that circumstance, which kind of sucks. They also encouraged the girls to lick the paintbrushes to get the brushes small enough to get it on the watches. Oh, yeah. I remember that. I forgot about that bit. Sorry. Th thank you very much, everybody. Would I ever do a hat in time stream? I've done many. <laughs> I've done so many hat in time streams. It is insane. I'm currently moving over towards, like, a bunch of other games. So, yeah. forgive me if I'm not doing it a lot. They, huh? <laughs> yeah, that was the thing. Dude, I, I, I forget when this happened, but back then, the um, the safety measures were just in the toilet. <laughs> they really didn't care about, like, you know... I mean, l l let's be real. People don't... You know, there's a lot of people that don't care about taking care of their factory workers and also their warehouse workers. You know, Jeff Bezos. Ha ha. Um, but even back then, like, they basically took a chemical that they were like, oh, yeah. funny enough, um, one, I think one of the parts of that lawsuit was to try and, uh, prove that they knew well enough in advance that the, uh, that the radium that they were using was toxic, but that they didn't do anything about it. Um, and I think at the beginning, I don't think they knew, but then around like the halfway point or like the three fourths of the way point, they found out that it was toxic and then they chose not to say anything and i think that was one of the reasons why they got into massive trouble because they're like uh oh this is gonna kill them what should we do nothing uh, <laughs> i don't know hmm. dang i must have missed out i i played like hat in time like a lot um way back i think this was about like two years ago three years ago um, I've done a couple of, like, extra, uh, Hat in Time mod specials in the past. Um, not too long ago. Oh, and also, um, we're, we're being asked what our favorite memes are. And, uh, specifically Nova is asking, uh, Kyle what their favorite meme is. My favorite meme? Ah, oh, man, you're gonna make me think. Yeah, I hate doing that, too. Do you have any personal favorites right now? Uh, not off the bat. Mm -hmm. Not that I can think of immediately. Um, I'm gonna go over to my, uh, my spam and memes channel. See if I can find, uh, what my personal favorite is. Because I've seen a couple. Hmm. I'm scrolling through here real quick. Oh, some of these are so stupid. I'm seeing a quadruple-headed fork. I, for I forgot I posted that. <laughs> uh, Pierce posted that one gif of like tails from sonic and he's just like sitting in front of a bowl of what looks like just cheese and he's trying to like scoop cheese up with a fork <laughs> and, but he's looking super happy while he's doing it. it's like <laughs> oh Epe is talking about radioactive soda what the heck there was a radioactive soda that people drank back then uh there was this one guy that drank so much that they had to bury him in a lead coffin Research at your own risk, because it caused bad facial damage. Okay, yeah, keep that in mind. Ugh, that's freaking terrible. Yeah, that's, that, that's the creepy thing. Radioactivity is scary, because, like, it literally pokes holes in you. Oh, God, no. And I thought I was bad. I thought I was, like, I was in a bad situation where I'm just like, I really like soda too much. Going to a small convention next week. That's cool.
Um, my personal favorite. So, <laughs> I don't know why, but that seeing that one, um, that one Tails meme reminded me of that one clip from Sonic Boom. Uh, and it was, it was Eggman stand, like, like, sitting down and, like, having soup. And he's just like, the soup is cold and the salad is hot. How does that even happen? <laughs> uh, that one makes me happy. Might go to Comic-Con? Ooh, that's cool. Mm. Well, I haven't thought about going to any sort of conventions, like, ever since the pandemic hit. <laughs> like, we talk about the con crud. Holy crap. Like, con crud is 20 times more toxic now, man. Might go to Comic-Con as Jax, you said. Interesting. Now, are we talking about... Um, Jax from, like, you know, the Amazing Digital Circus? I'm assuming. Are we Let's talking see. Jax from uh, Street Fighter? Was there or Tekken? Or one, one of the two. I think there was a Jax from Mortal no, Kombat. No, Mortal Kombat. Yeah, That's right. I was just like, I... <laughs> there... Man, a lot of name characters are named Jax. Uh, Jax from Mortal Kombat. Massive arms. Jax the rabbit who acts like a rat i mean is is Jax a rabbit <laughs> i don't know has that been um has that been established within uh amazing digital circus lore because he looks like a rabbit but i don't know if he's like canonically a rabbit i'm sorry that i'm also co uh, covering up the chat with a 3d printer you know I'll move you up there. Why not? Because we're still talking about it a little bit. Kinda? <laughs> Interesting. I fr maybe I wasn't paying too much attention to the, uh, you know, the episodes as I was watching. But... Mm. Crackers. What? Crackers. Crackers. Yeah. The good stuff. Rich. Why were you covering us with a printer? Because I wasn't thinking. <laughs> I was just going to show you, like, you know, an enlarged version of the picture. And then I, like, you know, then I just kind of left it there. You know, me being the, uh, the flighty-brained person that I am. So what are you currently playing right now? I'm currently playing Rusted Warfare. What is that game? It's a, uh, RTS. It's very simple. Doesn't take a whole lot of memory, doesn't take a whole lot of RAM. Very simple graphics style. Hmm. Except it's been out for a while and has modding support. I'm, gonna so I'm playing a rather game. intensive mod for it. Oh, wow. I'm looking at it right now and, um, yeah. RTS inspired by the classics of the past. I can tell. There's a lot of, like, you know, classic style stuff going on. A lot of this stuff reminds me of TA. Although, even, like, more simple graphics, if you can believe it. I'm playing Kirby while watching, says Nova. Mm, very nice. The base game itself is pretty simple. I was basically over it in like 15, 16 hours. Okay. Since I only play with my nine best friends, CPUs one through nine. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that, that's a vibe. But there is a particular mod for it that is intensive and turns it into more of a uh, uh, Supreme Commander type game, if you know what that, that means. Like, instead of a headquarters, you get an ACU, Armored Command Unit. Interesting. And that that you can move around the map, you can build stuff with. Hmm. Okay. See, I played a heck of a lot of, like, so, man, again, I remember uh, my, my childhood of just coming home and then playing Total Annihilation on my clunker of a, of a, of a PC. 
And it barely ran, but I was happy. <laughs> um, F Bay says, I've been playing Tears of the Kingdom, kind of stuck on the last boss. Um, hmm, the last boss. Interesting. I, you know, maybe it's just the fact that I played the ever loving hell out of that game, but I don't remember getting really stuck on the final boss. Like, to me, it always felt like if you collect basically everything and do all of the story missions within Tears of the Kingdom, your chances of losing the final boss are close to none because you've got so much back. Uh, like, you have so much backup and so many things that are helping you and, like, you know, giving you support that it's nigh impossible. You have Smile for Me for the Switch now, and it came with stickers and cards. Mm. It's like a, a special physical version? That's kind of neat. Stuck on the last boss in Kirby. Interesting stuff. Also, I think um, Pink was asking, which Kirby are you currently playing? Trying to get my motivation to play Hat in Time Death Wish. Boy, I don't have enough uh, motivation to do that. Mm -mm. No, no. Too much pain. Not enough care. Like, look, I love Hat in Time, don't get me wrong. But also, I'm not a glutton for, like, you know, pain and anguish. I am fine without that in my life. Here, I'm going to move some stuff off to the side. And I do happen to have Stardew Valley currently up. So why not? Let's give it a play. There we go. Now, where the heck was uh, I the last stream that I we did this? Because it was a while ago. Hello! Clear and sunny all day. Whoop -a -whoop. Okay, ah, yes. I remember that the um, the outer portion is, like, very overgrown. Oh, yeah, right. Okay, so we've got... It is the 16th, and I'm trying to grow these pumpkins into, like, you know, the massive gordo. Big pumpkin. There I am. My kitty. Meow. Okay. I will eat the entire farm. Um, tasty. What do we currently have here? Yeah, let's let's keep all like the silvers. That's good. Too bad I'm already suffering from the second act of uh, Seal the Deal. Oh. I do like the uh, the visual overhauls on a bunch of the things in this game. You know, especially like, you know, you can collect moss on the trees. And maybe consume, maybe? <laughs> no, but wouldn't it be funny? I don't know what that says, Pink. It confuses me. I don't know Japanese. <laughs> okay. So we got a Stardew Valley something or other going on. I don't remember what it was. I beat Seal the Deal first try, but I'm struggling so hard on the Death Wish. Uh, stuck on the giant hoodie. I don't know how to spell. Wow. Oh, the gr great hoodie? The great hoot? Ah, you said it is a cute cat. Meow. I've been filling up. Oh! <laughs> Kitty saw me fill the cat, uh, the, the water dish. Oh, cute. That's good attention to detail. <gasps> That's right! Oh, it's the fair! Oh, shoot. I remember that. Okay. You know what? Board don't want to do the Grand, grand Range this year. Whatever. All it was going to do was give me a bunch of um, 
extra, like, funny points. I don't need that. You know all I need? Fish. Lots and lots and lots of fish. Actually, I got plenty of money, so yeah, I could totally do this. I can buy my way into this. Hello. Try your heart at fishing. You could win big. Not really. Anyways. I mean, luckily, I have trained myself for this moment. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, the Owl Parade. Oh, that one was obnoxious. I have such a hard time on, like, those missions specifically. Especially when you have, like, so many, like, owls following you. Sometimes I feel like Gears for Breakfast, like, you know, they're a good game developer. They know what they're doing. But every once in a while, they have this really weird streak of, like, I don't know. Sadicism. Where <laughs> it's just like, ah, yes. Complete the stupidly hard hell map. <laughs> I am her boy. <laughs> oh, you uh, got a Japanese keyboard. You downloaded. Very interesting. Uh, I've been on a kick of watching keyboard videos on YouTube again. Hey, peace and tranquility. No. <laughs> Insolent little fish. Stay. Oh, we're done. I tried my very best. 264. That's not bad. I think, uh, I forget how much it costs to get um, the star drop. I think it's 2,000. Am I allowed to use fonts? Um, it really depends. Yeah, 2,000. Uh, get out of the frickin' way. We were talking about Death Wish earlier, and... Th ah! I didn't mean to leave! Dang it! That is 50 coins down the drain. I didn't know that was possible. Like that? Ah. Ah, it's okay. As long as you're not gotten, like, you know, stupidly ridiculous with it. Talking about Death Wish earlier, and Peace and Tranquility comes out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. It's one of the best things to come out of Death Wish, honestly. <laughs> the I mod adds... What? The, the mod that I'm playing adds a particular turret that I'm not sure the game was quite ready for, but it still works pretty well. Okay. It's the magnet turret. It grabs a unit and applies force to it. Okay. I have 24 of them in a tight turret formation. Oh. So, like... So it's, like... it's funny to watch them grab a unit and then watch that unit fly at high speed towards the turret formation and slam into the wall. That is amazing. Problem is, it doesn't work so good on against tanks. They have a lot of mass. Dang. Now mods are good for that. <laughs> just like Aircraft just whip back and forth because the turrets don't know when to let go. <laughs> oh, wow. Can you imagine being that like aircraft uh, fighter who's just flying around and being constantly flung back and forth, like, you know, and getting whiplash like nobody's business. <laughs> it's like, I'm gonna freaking hurl! <laughs> Come on. 
Come on, you. There we go. Ah, oh, man. Oh, my God. All right. That was not my best round, but okay. I'm glad I have absolute oodles and oodles of money. I should start using those on, like, improving my tools. Actually, yeah, during the winter months, I I should probably take my time to um, upgrade my tools. Because, you know, they're going to be very important when the, uh, the season rolls around. Especially the hoe. I dare you to try Five Nights at Freddy's mods. Now, are we talking like the original Five Nights at Freddy's? I'm, you know, I'm not surprised that there are Five Nights at Freddy's mods. Because that, that makes sense. I know there's a lot of like fan games and tribute games where it's just like, ha ha, well, you know, welcome to uh, 12 Nights at the Krusty Krab. Welcome to 15 Nights at the Chum Bucket. Welcome to 17 Nights at, uh... Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to think of another one. Another meme one. Frosty Nights. I, I don't know what that is. Horror games aren't really my bag. Like, not really. I think I've said it before, and I will say it again. Uh, I have got enough, like, you know, fun anxiety that me, like, playing a horror game is not a fun experience. Christmas-related horror game. Oh, okay. Uh That's why I tend to not, like, play too many horror games, though. One week inside Arby's. No, 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 no. No, no, that's too terrifying. Uh-uh. No, can't do that. <laughs> Six nights at Wendy's. It's just spent, like, being constantly berated by the Wendy's girl. Oh, you like those kind of games, huh? Oh. <laughs> Boy, gee, I thought we were talking to a gamer here. Nope. Beta scrub. <laughs> Fish. An actual Arby's horror game. 50 Nights at Disney. Welcome to the Magic Kingdom! <laughs> I mean, to be fair, um, you know... Eh. Steamboat Willy Mickey is like open source kind of so or like public domain so at this point somebody could do it not, maybe not with like the whole Magic Kingdom but definitely with like you know the Mickey related stuff and boy howdy did people sure do it I continue to hold my opinion on that one the only thing that uh the, like, the, the only experiences people should really pay attention to are the um, the Mickey experiences that come out after, like, I'm going to say, uh, give, give them another, like, three years or so. Because after three years, that means that whoever was working on something, um, you know, old school Mickey related, they're doing it because they have, like, a genuine interest. And they started production as soon as it became public domain. It's not a case of somebody who's jumping on a bandwagon and being like, Hey, we're releasing this uh, this preview of this game we're releasing, uh, th that we're going to be releasing very soon, and it's got the f spooky Mickey Mouse in it. Whoa! Five Nights at Subcon? <laughs> uh, what is... Uh, yeah, what is your favorite meme? What's everybody's favorite meme, honestly?
Five Nights at Dead Bird Studios. And like the scares are just the call agents. I think that'd be kind of funny. Uh, image share channel in the Discord. Two glow in the dark filaments. Really? Okay, give me a second. Whoa! Holy shit! <laughs> Boy, that thing is like. Mm. Now imagine taking a black light and supercharging that son of a like son of a. Oh, that'd be insane. Sparkly blue. I like that very much. I have not even thought about having glow in the dark filament. I I'm just Pappy. I'm starting out here. <laughs> Just starting out with, like, the, uh, the, the new stuff. That is supercharged? Oh. Ooh. I like that. My favorite meme is the two nickels meme. Yeah! Oh, that, that's a good one. If I had a nickel for every time this happened, I'd have two nickels. Which isn't much, but it's surprising it happened twice. It's <laughs> a freaking great meme. Favorite meme is... Uh, you know what that means? Fish! You haven't said that quite a few times, Joe. Yeah. Ultra charge! Mega charge! All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to play a little game, and it's called gambling. We're going to come over here, and we are going to risk it all for a chance at doubling our price and being able to get out of here early. And we might not. So... I'm going to give you guys the option. Which one do we choose? Do we go for orange or do we go for green? The fate of this stream is in your hands. We have one vote for green. Two votes for green. We have three votes for... Wait, nope. We only have two votes for green. Okay, three votes. All right, we have three votes for green and one vote for orange. Can we see a pickup? How many more people want to vote and potentially push green out of the, you know, out of this, uh, the circle? Hmm? Pink, I cannot read Japanese. <laughs> I appreciate the... Uh, Novus is blue. <laughs> I believe green has won. <laughs> all right, so yeah, I'm I'm taking all all responsibility of this off my chest. Oh, okay, so we have four votes for. You know what? All let's let's put all on the line here. If we fudge up, we're losing it all. And spin. <laughs> Damn it! We have to go fishing again! Oh well. <laughs> we tried. Green in Japanese means Midori. The Undertale meme, it's you. Oh yeah, despite everything, it's still you. That one's just wholesome. Ah, stupid catfish. Thank you. Purple. Mm. Fish like your life depends on it, bitch. I am! Fish like the wind! Become the fisherman I've always wished to be! Actually, no, that's a lie. Never wanted to be a fisherman. Despite my dad trying so hard. <laughs> my dad was just like, you would like fishing. Come on. Come on out on the boats. Come and hang out with your old man. You don't have to worry about doing any of the cleaning or anything like that. I'll, I'll take care of that for you. It's just like, oh, God. <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. I'm sorry. You tried to raise, like, you know, a son who liked all of the, the rough and tough things, and then I played video games, and then that was the end of that. <laughs> I 
I don't think I know the always come back meme. Sounds familiar, but I'm not entirely sure. Boink. Fish with my grandpa. It was fun. Had his own pond. Ooh, that's cool. Hey, good start. We're picking ourselves back up here. I, maybe it's just me. I feel like this fishing game... Was this fishing game a little bit, like, harder back then? Or, like, I don't... I feel like it didn't give this many points. Maybe I'm just, like, crazy. Or maybe I'm just that good at fish. Yeah. Yep. This... This catfish is being a jerk. Stop. Ah. Got him. Oh, okay. It's from FNAF. Wouldn't know. Not within the FNAF sphere, personally. I saw gameplay of the first few games, and I went, "That's interesting." Anyway, what's what? What else is happening out there on the internet? You know what's like a um a series that has like truly like well and truly completely dropped off the map? Slender. Frickin' Slenderman. How many people actually talk about Slenderman nowadays? Practically nobody. It has, like, no staying power, which is really strange, because it, it hit real hard, and then just people stopped talking about Slenderman. It's freaking crazy. Today's the anniversary of Bendy and the Ink Machine. Really? That's cool. Hey, oh, boys, we're ready. Oh, yeah, ready. I saw that on uh, the Steam front page. They got, like, a new a new one out or something. Do they have a new one? Let me uh, let me check the front page. Uh, another ad for Destiny 2. Great. Planet Bendy, Planet Secrets Planet. of the Machine. There we go. Secrets of the Machine. Free to play, apparently. Uh, not seeing it in, like, my stuff immediately. Are, are we talking about... Oh, yeah, new and trending. Yeah, there you go. Secrets of the Machine. Hmm. It's very positive, so that's good. Isn't that a fan-made game? Is it? I have no clue, but that would explain why it's free. There. I'll take a look at it real quick. Um, the visuals don't look like they line up with the, uh, the other Bendy logos, so maybe it's a fan game? Hmm. I like this review. I have no idea what's going on. It's 2 a.m. I'm high and scared. Smoke an herbal substance. I love th this one uh, review. Well, that was a waste of my time. Gee, can you tell me what the hell it was that was a waste of your time, buddy? I mean, that's not the whole point of video games. I mean, if you enjoyed your experience, was it a waste? There's a mod where Hat Kid turns into the conductor. Um... So you play as conductor now. I think I remember I did the voice for that one. Heh! <laughs> Heh! 
Anyway. It is time to wager it all, ladies and gentlemen. How much Come money should we be putting on the table? Everybody voted for green before, but maybe it'll be different. Maybe it won't. Who knows? We're trying it again. L ladies and gentlemen, either orange or green, make your selections now. We have one vote for orange, one vote for green. Two votes for green are in. Oh, one vote for orange now. It is completely split, but you know, between the middle. Who will be the separator? Either orange or green. Who wants to vote? Hmm. Okay, we have another vote for green. So green is currently... Oh, wait. We have four votes for green and three votes for orange. Hmm. I think. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to pay attention to who has voted and who has not. Anywho's. It appears that green has just managed to edge out orange this time around, so we are going for green again! And again, it is all or nothing. Will we be victorious? We will see! Do it! Spin the wheel! We are victorious, ladies and gentlemen! <laughs> ah, that, that worked out! Yay, betting on green. And you, some of you guys said orange. Thank you for your uh, your input, guys. What, what the heck is a prize ticket? Bring this to the prize machine and lose this house for a special reward. What the hell are you? Anyway, we're going to grab the star drop. Ta-da! The taste reminds you of cheese. Delicious. Uh, do you know what the name is of the conductor mod? I think it's just Playable Conductor, if I remember right. Whether or not it actually still works nowadays, I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, prize ticket? And pepper poppers, in the case I want those. Um, all right, well, I, I guess we're going to save up for another round of, uh, of stuff here. More fish. Here. Let, let's just go ahead and... Um, I, we could probably collect the thousand pretty easily out of this minigame after a couple of shots. Um, but I, I do like me the silly gambling in this game, so... Aw, oh, man. I'll probably put it all on the line one more time. Because, I mean, hey, if we get even more than 500, we could double our chances of having more money. And so we can have more extra stuff. So I have never personally been in, like, the, the bendy sort of uh, place. It's weird. Horror games, especially horror games within this specific genre, they have a specific marketing campaign of like, you know, they release a free copy of whatever it is they're making, and then they release like episodic stuff as DLC, which is interesting. I, I don't hate that as a concept, but it's weird seeing so many different, um, so many different studios doing that exact same thing. You know, why does this game remind me of Animal Crossing? Um, it has some Animal Crossing elements, I guess. Uh, for a lot of people, like, it, this reminds people heavily of stuff like Harvest Moon. Oh, God, I can't wait for, um, person making this game. Eh. What, what was his name? Concerned Ape or whatever the heck? Um, he is currently working on the next game to come out. It's not like a sequel to this. It's... Um, it is a game where you are a chocolatier. Haunted chocolatier. Aw, oh, man. That was not a lot. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That sounds really fun. You can make all kinds of different types of chocolate. Come on! Stop giving me weeds. Kind of wish they allowed you to at least keep the weeds. Like, they don't. They're just like, oh, well, throw it back. These are not your fish. This is not your weeds.
I heard there's going to be a horror movie based on that rigged event. Good question. I think, um... Hmm. Boy, I, see, I don't know whether or not, like, so is the person who originally made the event, are they going to be involved in it in any way, shape, or form? Because if they are, uh, screw that. Don't go watching that movie, because that's just you. So I think most people know that the whole Willy Wonka experience was more or less made out of, like, you know, a bunch of... A bunch of, like, chat GPT and, like, you know, generated image types of stuff. Like, basically, this is the result of what happens when you decide to make an entirety of a story uh, using machine learning, essentially. And I really genuinely hope people don't go and uh, watch something from that creator from this point on. Oh, hello, there's a shoop in here. How's it going? Oh, I finished a very, very long day. Oh. Uh, I feel that. Any particulars on that one? Uh, let's see here. Fright. Let me see. A little bit hazy. And I haven't even actually started drinking this wonderful mead yet. Yeah. Uh, Friday, it was just consistent throughout the day, but there were certain lines that were just having uh, just horrible malfunctions. And then uh, Saturday, came on in, gotten told of some few things of, oh, beware of this, beware of that, but it, it was basically a little tiny bit compared to everything else that should have been told. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and then today I figured, okay, I'll actually come on in. I'll set up uh, a line for the product and then just have like three hour cuts, two or three hour cuts. It would have been nice. But no, I gotten thrown into a different department, the packaging department. So I was just doing stuff nonstop throughout the day. Yeah, I, I think, man. The, the one thing that I hate, I'm not saying that, you know, your workplace has to give you all information about every branches. Like, I, I'm sure that if you knew everything about the company you were working for, in any company, you know, your head would explode. So it's good to compartmentalize. But it's another thing for a company to just be like, mm, that's on a need to know basis. And then, oh, you find out late, and then you find out later, yeah, you did need to know that. It's... I'll say it's not like higher up corporate. It's more like uh, ships pa sailing past each other, notifying of anything to be aware of. And uh, they just barely did anything. Wow. So it was that kind of thing. Not like higher up corporate. Oh, I'm always aware that there's stuff that they're not going to tell us. And it's just like, yeah. So it's, it's just. <laughs> It's the classic co-workers being co-workers thing, then. Yep. Co co-workers not doing the courtesy of a proper heads up. Ah, it's a shame. Also, um... What's my favorite thing in Hatton Time? I mean, look, I'm absolutely stupidly biased here. But the Snatcher stuff is so fun. Just the spooky woods and the spooky forest stuff. Subcon, like, I, I wasn't immediately sold on it, I think, when I first played it, but I think after a couple of uh, repeat plays, I realized just how fun that uh, that whole place is and how fun exploring it was. It was a little intimidating for me at first, because I was just like, where is everything? What is everything? But now he's fun. Uh, saw some stuff talking about, like, work-related things. I'm currently playing Stardew Valley, and... Uh, trying the fishing minigame and keeping my attention very firmly on that, so take a look at that message in just a second. How many more seconds do I got? Thirteen. I think I can get one more fish. I like the wiggle room they get when, like, you've run out of time, 
but you got a fish on the line, so sure, keep going. Anyway, right, um, had a hard day too, says Amp, especially because we had to deal with a very unliked type of person in the Discord that I mod. Ah, moderation stuff. Breaker of Discord TOS type. Oh, ew. Yeah, no, don't do that. Activated my ADHD. Hmm. I'm sorry to hear about that. Now, like I said, th a lot of stuff with um, moderating and things like that, don't envy it. Because that's that's a lot of stress and drama and frustration. I know that I've, um again, I am the moderator of my own community as well as I've also been in other communities where like I've seen stress and drama happen. Um, and I can say it's it's not fun. Especially when, like, clearly you are in the right, and yet this person who is currently, like, being a complete ass of themselves just won't admit they're wrong or won't, like, back down and just be like, fair enough, have a nice day. You know, like, you get that sometimes, man. And you're actually breaking terms of service? Yeah, if that's the case... Yeah, no. They have no, 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 nothing to stand on. That's stupid. Oh, it's a hate group. Okay, in that case, mm -mm. nope. Ditch them. Did you at you least know, purge them with napalm? <laughs> I wouldn't. Napalm? Good God. Wasn't going to go that far, but. Whew. Yeah, I could, I suppose. Well, if they anyway. want to start a fire war, they're going to need to learn to play in it. We happen to have the, uh, you know, the, the nuclear ban hammer. Anyway, I know this is incredibly stupid, and I have all the star points I need in order to get that one thing that I wanted to get. But gambling. We're doing it again. All or nothing, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do it. We're going to do a little bit of vote. Orange or green, make your selection now. Double or nothing. Shadow is here. Oh. Hello. Double or nothing. <laughs> I'll reach you in a second. Orange or green. All right. We have got another vote for green. Who wants to uh, Who wants to weigh in on that? W green is currently the winner at the moment. Ah, we've got two votes for green. Who wants to beat it? Who wants to bring orange back up from the dead? Green is currently sitting at three at the moment. Orange is currently behind by about three, but that is fine. Oh, it's behind by four. Never mind. Five for green and one for orange. Does anybody have anything else to say? I see that the Twitch chat has been very, very silent. Do you have any? Uh, do you have any votes? Do you have any like lean-ins? Could you potentially save orange from the depths of despair? It appears not. Everything's gone quiet. Okay, calling it. Going once. Going twice. Sold to green, I suppose. And again, I'm. All or nothing. <laughs> this is the stoop. I have I have all the money I need to get everything I need. I'm going to lose it all if this doesn't work. <laughs> Here we go. Guys, I better hope it's green. <laughs> Double on the thin. <laughs> we got it. Oh, man. I got so much more money now. Sweet. That worked out. Anyway. So just what is the thing that you're getting at the story? Um, there's this new item called the prize ticket that I've never seen before. Like, I weird. Apparently, like, you bring it into Lewis's house and you spend the ticket and then you get an item. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it does. But I'm very curious about that. Um... Also, Shadow earlier said, I painted my wall and I bought Stardew, but then instantly got sucked into a hyperfixation and I haven't touched the game at all. Ah, I've been there. <laughs> Twitch chat post with stick. Wake up. Do a thing. <laughs> Alrighty. Blue plus yellow equals green, so it is lucky color. I don't know how that makes Anyway, we're going to get the prize ticket. Apparently, you only get one of these. And then, 
I really don't care about the rare crows. Not really. I could get it. I could get a fedora and live out all of my gamer boy fantasies. I suppose. Snatcher versus Conductor, who do you think would win? We're going to continue. We're going to go back to the uh, the argument of, does Conductor know he needs to turn in blue? If yes, possibly. Because I think Conductor super fast, and he's capable of throwing a lot of buzzsaws. So, he's got potential. But he has to figure out that blue makes him immune to attacks. Sure, let's get the fedora. Um, I don't need the light green rug, not really. Well, if you wear the fedora, be sure to take out the weeps or, I mean, katana. I mean, funny enough. There we go. The only thing that we couldn't get was pepper poppers. And you can get that anywhere. So, we got all the exclusives. Anyway, no, we were talking about the Willy Wonka experience. Um, I remember somebody was talking about this not too long ago. Um, it was fun. It's funny how the Willy Wonka experience, you know, that, that whole stupid scam thing that happened where a dude chat GPT'd himself a bunch of, like, Wonka-related stuff and then just, like, sold the experience as being this super colorful, amazing, like... Oh my God! It's it, once in a lifetime, like you know, opportunity. Come out here to the, the, the Willy Wonka experience today, and then you get there, and the place is just like there's nothing going on in there, and it's awful. <laughs> and they have like you know, sad, sad Oompa Loompa gal at the uh, at the table, just being like, oh, I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. I got to do something for the kids. Got to make them happy. Uh, but I'm so tired. I'm so sick of this. I hate this experience. <laughs> And then you've got the unknown. I just recently saw that um, the the person who played as the unknown, like they, they are actively getting recognition as well. It's just freaking hilarious. <laughs> like every single person connected with that Willy Wonka experience thing, at least from an actor perspective, they're doing great. And I love that. And the only person who is like really getting shit for it is the person who originally made it. And I think that is like expert karma. And I genuinely hope they don't make bank off of it. Like, I hope they fail. I've Very been rarely would I ever, like, you know, wish failure upon another person. But if you are literally just going to con a bunch of people by using ChatGPT and, like, mid-journey to trick people into thinking that they're going to a super, like, magical Wonka experience, I don't have a lot of sympathy for you. Yeah. Yeah, I've been... Trying to find out uh, what the whole deal was. I've seen pictures here and there. Try to figure stuff out, but then it'll be like, I gotta get back to work. And what? realizing it's just some genius trying to do scammy chat GPT. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, like their website that had a bunch of like mid journey generated images of like cool Wonka art and they're trying to like push this idea they specifically had pictures of the event that looked like they were going to be the event they were super colorful and super highly detailed and then you get there and it's just you walk into a warehouse and they have a couple of sad stands and a couple of silly funny like Wonka activities and again a bunch of the scripts were generated via, like, chat GPT stuff. Which, you know, all the effort. And then, a little bit later, uh, people found out that the person that ran this event, this is not the first time they have attempted to try and um, con a crap ton of people into paying for stuff, uh, you know, with false, uh, false pretenses. Like, apparently this is just something that he does. And something that he's known for. Uh, and it's just like, he's finally getting his, um, he's finally getting his recognition for the crap that he's currently doing. 
Man, all I can actually picture him now is just like these little memes that I've actually seen of guy saying, I have to, I want to actually be recognized as an artist. And I was like, okay, so how do you make your stuff? Uh, physical and paint, charcoal, oils, uh, or computer? Do you actually draw it on there using a drawing board or whatnot? Oh, I have to use AI art. <laughs> yes, art. Um, ha have you ever seen that one meme of um, they take the, it's that one scene from the Puss in Boots movie where. Uh, it's death. He kicks the sword over to uh, to Puss in Boots, except like they overlaid the sword with a pen, <laughs> and Death goes, "Pick it up, pick <laughs> it up." I think I have actually seen that. <laughs> and, and Puss in Boots is just like, <sighs> "No, no, it's the best. It's great." Remade an old art um, thing. It's in the channel. Oh, okay. Give me a second. You can see the improvements. Let me see. Oh, sweet. That looks good. I like it. Cookies. Dang it. Now I want gingerbread. Bit, aren't you Snatcher's weakness since you're blue? <laughs> out of out of logistics? I, I think we... I, we might have discussed this before, but I am blue. I'm kind of basically the shade of blue that makes him in, invulnerable to attacks. So, by proxy, I think we did um, make the decision that, yes, <laughs> that is a thing. Watched 15 episodes of an anime in two nights. That is a heck of a binge right there. Those are rookie numbers. You gotta crank those numbers up. Oh. <laughs> 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 it ain't ain't nothing unless you like watch the entirety of like twelve movies in one sitting. Oh god! Mentioning of anime, I gotta actually. There's some shows that I've actually been watching that have ended for the season on, well, basically what they're able to uh, put out there to let people see. <laughs> um. Mm -hmm. But certain shows have actually ended for the season. It's just like, God damn it. And they actually, some of them actually left it on a really hard uh, cliffhanger. It's just like, no, no. That sucks when that happens. Yeah. Um, trying to remember. What was like, I, I've never really, funny enough, I don't watch a whole lot of like, you know, movie series or like, um, television series or anything. Very rarely have I ever um, run into a situation like that. The only times I've ever had that happen to me is whenever it's like a video game franchise. Um, so, you know, Half-Life. <laughs> That's an obvious one. Um, what other? What, what other things have just been sort of... I think, like, some of the stuff Telltale was doing was, like, unfortunately sort of cut short. I I tried some of the Telltale games and I just couldn't get into them. I I don't I'm not sure best way to describe it. Maybe it's the r really strong suspicion of like hardcore railroading of uh, your stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um. Early Telltale was really good. Like, early Telltale, they actually had, like, a lot of creativity going. They had some really good ideas for games, and they didn't just reuse the same engine over and over. Um, I mean, yeah, like, that, that can be said for, like, the Sam and Max games uh, that they did, um, which I still need to play, by the way. Um, the Homestar Runner games, they did a colossal job on that. Those were amazing. Um... I heard that, like, the Back to the Future games were pretty good. Um, I never played them, and for God's sake, one day I should. Um, problem is I don't really know where to get them, uh, because 
it's kind of lost media for PC at least. Um, but yeah, ever since The Walking Dead, like when The Walking Dead game became super popular and super successful, uh, I don't know whose decision it was in in the studio, but they somebody looked at every, the whole situation of Walking Dead success and they went, oh, more of this. Just this, nothing but this for the rest of time, for now and forever. And then every single thing that they, they did from that point on basically played exactly the same as The Walking Dead. Um, maybe a couple of changes here and there, but it was it was the same sort of formula. Like, extremely story-centric focus with not a lot of gameplay elements, which I tried playing The Walking Dead, and... It was kind of interesting at first, but I really couldn't get into it myself. And I think it... And keep in mind, this was the good game. This was the good franchise, where, like, they did a good job, and, like, it was the it was the first of its kind. I couldn't personally get into it, but it... I mean, I like me a good walking simulator. I like a good uh, novel type of game. Or, you know, like, visual novel type of game. Dude, I, I play freaking Phoenix Wright, for God's sake. Of course I like those games. Um... But there's something about The Walking Dead specifically that just, it felt like I didn't have any permanent or strong connection or impact in what was happening, as well as there wasn't a fun enough gameplay loop for me to be invested or interested in continuing to play. Um, and the same thing goes for like all the other games that they made from that point onward. I'm like, I can't. Like, I, um... I remember like Tales from the Borderlands was a very similar example of that exact same thing. And even though like some people have said that it's really good, um, it falls in that exact same category. I know the, um, what, what, what was it called? Like the Wolf Among Us or whatever the heck? Is that the name? Which is funny because yeah. that's, a, that's a very cruel name nowadays. <laughs> a Wolf Among Us. <laughs> um, Although, I did hear that um, some studio picked it up. I, I don't know whether or not they're... I don't know how they're doing, but... We'll see. Um, what are they... Oh, yeah, Minecraft Story Mode. That was a tragedy. <laughs> the... What? Yeah, you know about that, right? Maybe I looked at it just like, oh, another Minecraft thing. Whatever. Um, yeah, Telltale did uh, Minecraft Story Mode. And it was basically just a Telltale game, but Minecraft. Uh, and, like, I remember people were really super excited about the idea and the concept behind it. Uh, but then it came out, and I think that the consensus was, all right, the story's fine, but, you know, it's not really engaging. Not ridiculously engaging. And also, um, you, you remember, like, Minecraft YouTube channels where, that like did 3D animation like back in that time like did you ever see any videos like that? They were in like the two nope. the 2015 era? Nope. No? You didn't see any of those videos? No. Huh. Didn't surprised. really pop up for me. They're, they're kind of like everywhere. I, I know that um, I saw them a whole bunch. Well let's just say the Minecraft YouTube uh, videos that were being released at the time were sig significantly higher quality in the animation budget than the Telltale stuff. Like, <laughs> there was actual emotion and really smooth animation going on with, like, you know, you know their their mannerisms, the way they move, the like the their faces. And meanwhile, Telltale's is just incredibly like, I mean, it's blocky. It should be blocky because blocks but it looks awful <laughs> in, in comparison and a lot of people pointed at that and they're just like this is an actual funded video game and this is just a random project that somebody made because they wanted to make a funny internet video and the internet video completely like tops it one of these things just it's doesn't like belong it. here one of these things just doesn't belong and then Telltale kind of brought too many projects on at once. They stretched themselves too thin. They tried making way too much of the exact same thing over and over. And they ended up losing basically all their money and they went bankrupt. So I, that, that's why I say I feel Telltale is a massive tragedy. Because 
they were kind of swallowed up by their own ambition and their own, uh, you know, their own business bit, um, vision. And the, and the business model they tried so desperately to get working properly. Oh, wait. Uh, it's Minecraft story mode on Netflix? So, wait. Am I thinking of something different? I remember there was, like... Is Minecraft story mode, like, an animated series, and then there was also a game attached to it? I'm trying to remember. I remember there was a game. I remember Telltale made a Minecraft thing. It was weird. My Telltale, like, they had their hands in so many different properties. It's weird. It was the game on Netflix? <laughs> okay, so now we know for certain that it didn't need to be a video game. Oh, uh, holy shit. Anyway, uh, so I, I've got this prize ticket thing. I want to see what this does. Oh. Um, okay. Press. I got 12 broccoli seeds. And then next is like a peach tree or something. Very interesting. What? When do I? Okay, plant in the fall. I I can't. I... Also, does it um... continues to produce after its first harvest? So it would be a waste of my time to plant it now because it's the seventeenth. Noted. Oh man. No, I, I'm an advocate. I am seriously an advocate of um, more more TV shows and more movies need to start getting released on Blu-ray again. Or something. Some physical media somewhere needs to start happening again with movies and television shows. Fully convinced of that. Because uh, I'm sick and tired of this whole, like, uh, you know... Contractual agreements have made it so that we cannot continue to keep holding on to uh, this property on our streaming, streaming platform. So, goodbye. Cannot see this anymore. Cannot watch. I know this basically means that this is lost media now, but, you know, too bad, so sad, goodbye. It's like... I don't know. Maybe, maybe you just didn't actually find the right people to ask. You know, uh, those who know how to do quite a bit of sailing. Mm-hmm. I mean, look, I understand that the high seas is an option. <laughs> I'm not going to pretend like it's not. Because <laughs> you're right. However, I, I'm one of those crazy guys who um, I'm, I'm not going to say that I would do this, but I will say in a circumstance where I kind of felt like it or it would be viable, I totally would be the kind of guy who would um, hack his own switch system and dump his own firmware and ROMs and play them himself instead of going and downloading all of that stuff off of the internet because that's piracy and that's wrong. You know, I totally would be that guy. I'm not saying that I did it, but I'm saying that it, you know, I'd be the kind of guy that would. Because I'm not a like I'm not an advocate of piracy. I'm gonna, I I totally like. First of all, I definitely want to hand money over to people that. Um, make this stuff so they can continue making uh, making the fun stuff it's cool yep i want i want more fun stuff um but also uh, oh on top of that uh, there are so many companies who are trying to use piracy as an excuse for making things 10 times shittier and i don't want to give them any reason to have an excuse mm. i the the more that i can disrupt that narrative the better in my opinion oh Hey, Sebastian. What time is it? I think I slept too much last night. Can you teach me your ways? <laughs> <laughs> um, how much is the... 10 clay, 5 copper, 100 stone, and 100... I really should make one of these silos. Uh, cause... Winter is coming, and all that grass that's currently accumulated inside of my yard... Um, that stuff is going to die very shortly here. The reaping is upon us. Yes. The cold. The cold, it saps my brain. It saps my spirit. Like, look at all the, this is This is all perfectly good grass. And I could use this in a silo. 
And I'm sure I have, like, plenty of materials to do stuff. So here. Yeah, look at this. All of the rock. The <laughs> rock, yeah. Dwayneson, the rock, a Johnson? Okay, and then 10 clay. I'm, I'm sure I probably got, like, 10 clay. Yeah, totally. There we go. Anyway, as somebody who um, I do fear for the preservation of video games, um, I am a little bit worried that, like, a lot of online experiences are just that they're not being archived and you will never be able to play them in the exact same way ever again. Mm -hmm. Oh, and also um, game studios are making a ton of like online only experiences that it is to their benefit to kill them off. I don't like that. Anyway. So I believe. Hmm. I think a good place to put this would be right in the corner, right here. Yeah, silo times. Sorry if I'm asking too much, but what is your second favorite character in Hat and Time? Don't worry, you're he's fine. Go ahead and ask questions, it's fine. Um, I mean, first one's definitely Snatcher, second one would be, would be Conductor. Just because, like, I like me a good villain that has, like, a, a, a little bit of that tinge of insanity connected to them. You know? What well, I don't have a pick and clue what you're talking about. The pick and clue you're talking about! That pick I, I ran out. I really wish that um, I had more of a spine because I totally would say, like, swear, actual, actual swear words in Conductor's voice. I can't do it. I, 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 I care a little bit too much. Oh! Right, I gotta think of something to plant here. Um, hmm. How much? Okay, so what, what do we got in here? We don't have enough uh, sunflower seeds, which is what was there before. And it's Wednesday, so the shop's closed. Um, that's gonna take too much time. How long does it take for the fall seeds to grow? Screw it. I am not the person to ask. Anyone in the doing? audience? <laughs> too late i'm already putting them out <laughs> i'm sure it'll be fine I, I don't remember the fall seeds taking too long to grow and we've got like at least seven well okay 16 days i think so we're good after being stuck with my old windows 7 laptop for seven to eight years what is that ah! ah! <laughs> Hey, 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 give a little credit. If it's actually still living that long, you should actually be giving it a little bit of dignity. I mean, look, no, 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 that, that is a veteran and a half. I, I will <laughs> definitely, like, I, I take my hat off and salute to it. However, <laughs> also, it's Windows 7, so that's the good one. <laughs> uh, anyway, um... I'm finally getting a new laptop. Perfect timing because my old one is having hard drive issues. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Oh. T time to get rid of that. I'm surprised that, like, you. I mean, all right, so I'm, I, I don't know whether or not you had solid state or not. I'm going to assume you probably did because solid state. Well, actually, no, no. I don't think you did because solid state drives tend to last, like, in theory between like 10 to 20 years or at least like that's that's the amount that they say you should use it uh so i'm assuming it was probably a a standard hard disk drive so the fact that that thing lasted for seven to eight years is actually kind of miraculous because like it's a laptop and also it's a hard drive it's a hard disk drive those things usually die within the span of five yeah standard drive man so whatever a computer you get from here on out, um, you're likely going to end up getting a solid state or like, you know, an NVMe or something like that. Those suckers fly. <laughs> you're going to see like an, a, a massive difference. Duma says, honestly, I can agree with your favorite characters a bit. I got the same uh, favorite characters. Again, just a little bit of spice, a little bit of crazy. 
How can you do a conductor? I've been trying for years and I can't for the life of me. Practice. Tons and tons of practice. That is uh, my best tip that I can give you. My I advice would be actually looking for it is just not giving a flying peck. Yeah, a flying peck about it. Even that, I, I don't think that I'm like amazing with the conductor voice. It doesn't sound exactly yeah. like the conductor, but I think I think spirit's a big part of it, though. Yeah. It's the effort, the drive. You gotta put in the effort. Mushrooms. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Would have got the mushrooms, but with the pecking badges. Badges. We don't need no pecking badges. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Yeah. Uh, see, I I don't know. I'm starting to think that I, I forget where you can get the these mushrooms, but I I seem to remember that the fruit is just a little bit harder to get because some of the fruit that you need requires you to like actually buy the 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 fruit twenty stuff like. So I'm kind of like at, at least with like the mushrooms you can find like underground. I'm debating on whether or not I should, uh, you, you know, was that a good move or was that a bad move? Unsure. I forget. Where, where did I keep morals? Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to guess that chest. <clears throat> Yummy. Mushrooms. You know, I, I hate... So, the taste of mushrooms is fine. Especially... If you use it in a nice sort of a garnish thing, like if you use it as sort of a, a base for a sauce, mwah, delicious. The texture of mushrooms drives me insane. <laughs> My mushroom texture is, a, I, I hate it. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. I it's don't just, know It's, it's like chewing on rubber. Only eat mushrooms if it is in miso soup. <gasps> oh. 510. I don't have a whole lot to do up until this point. Uh, I'm think actually going headlong into mushroom topic now. I've seen at uh, at Sam's Club, but I don't think they actually have it anymore. Or maybe it's a fever dream and I'm thinking of Costco. No, I don't have a membership over there. Uh, <laughs> but I had actually seen they got just a uh, nice size container of white button mushrooms and then uh, standard brown mushrooms you could actually get your hands on. But I have seen, I'm actually thinking more, it was Costco. There was like a special mushroom mix of many different kinds of mushrooms in there. And it's like, oh god, if I knew how to actually properly uh, prepare them, I would die happy oh it, it was a nice beautiful variety of shrooms you, you like you That's... like a nice bouquet of different uh different um you know mushrooms and stuff mm. that's valid i i know some people that absolutely adore mushrooms i'm unfortunately not one of them but hey i i have the exact same opinion on like food that i don't like as like you know, the, the pineapple on pizza thing. My opinion, if you like it, fine. <laughs> Don't listen to my stupid face. Enjoy it just what means you enjoy. More, exactly. It's more for you. I've had it to yeah. I've constantly said that. I've said that so many times for uh, people, uh, the food that I have or drinks that I get and let them try. And they'll be like, I don't know if I like it. It's like, look, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, it just means more for me. Exactly. I remember when Pepsi Fire was a thing and nobody liked it. Meanwhile, I'm like, yes, 12 more cases, please. <laughs> I'm, I, I fully admit that I'm the weirdo, but whatever. I don't remember. I'll enjoy it to my heart's tried, content. I don't remember if I actually tried that one or not. I know um, I've been at least trying out some of the uh, special flavor Cokes that um, they have done. I mean, that's, that is a broad list right there. Yeah, it's a broad list. Uh, 
and I sadly can't remember the names of some of them. Um, mm, but... I've I've tried many different ones. Like, you know, they got their whole Coca Cola creation line. Yeah, where they're that's... just like, oh, designer Coca Cola, and it's like, look, as long as I can get some slightly different flavors of Coke, I'm fine with it. <laughs> Whatever. As long as you don't have to snort it. Yeah. I'm excited since it won't be a hand-me-down either. Heck yeah, boy. Uh, the laptop is older than you think, by the way, but yeah, I'm getting a new one that I worked my butt off for. Just getting a new laptop in general, especially since you're currently using a laptop that was from the Windows 7 generation, you're going to have a good time, I think. A whole new world. If you can just get, like, a Windows 10 laptop, of all things, that will do you some good. Um, want to know exactly how old that laptop is? Because it will shock you. I, I mean, I'm going to say two years. I wouldn't say that I'd be shocked, but go for it. 2002 HP Notebook. Wow. Oh. That's that's much older than any laptop that I have uh, messed around with. Does hmm. it also have 56K modem built right in? Because that's space age. <laughs> Okay, um, I need to buy me some more stuff. I'm going to buy, like, one sunflower seed. And... I think, um... Got enough time in the season that I can get... Two of these, I think. <gasps> Do I? <laughs> ah, whatever. It's not that expensive. Better to have the seeds than not have the seeds later and then, like, regret life. That drive has been around longer than me, and it just started to fail. It's weird to think of, like, like I've seen some technology from, like, the 1980s, and I look at that stuff, and I go, like, my god. It's, you know... This thing has had a longer shelf life than I have. <laughs> I've fallen apart much less than this uh, this blender from the 1970s. Okay. So this is all set up and good and ready and stuff. What was this before, by the way? I don't remember what I planted here. Guess we'll see. Hopefully it'll be done before the season is over. It's the exact feeling I got. <laughs> I don't know why, but whenever you're looking at the screen, I just keep thinking that you're breaking the fourth wall. Uh, what screen are we talking about? Are, are we talking about the screen over here? Like, you know, with like the gameplay and stuff? Or do you mean looking directly into your soul? I can see. Yeah. Pies for the viewers if you're ginger, because then he's just looking through and saying nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Directly at us. <laughs> I can't I see it. you. <laughs> you're looking lovely, I... by the way. Did you change your hair? Uh, you have something stuck in your teeth. <laughs> yeah, it's right there. Pit, no! <laughs> Uncanny bit. If Conductor were to fight Empress, who do you think would win? Uh, I'd have to go... I'd have to go with Empress. E e Empress is in... The only reason that Empress even lost is because the police showed up. I'm pretty sure Empress would have absolutely killed a person <laughs> in the right circumstances. Conductor has tried, but like, you know... Conductor is like it, he's he's kind of quaint in his evilness. Conductor's Empress just nice. wants to kill Empress you. Empress has a uh, rocket launcher. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, she's got artillery. I don't know where she gets it, but holy shit! Magic satchel, Magic otherwise known as the hide things behind your back trick. 
Oh, yeah, right. She does have the ability to do that and just pull it out of nowhere. It's like, boom! That's actually an animation uh, trick. Empress is the Nyakuza boss. She killed a cat in front of Hatkin. This is true. <laughs> this is actually, yeah, very true. Cold-blooded, man. Oh, God, that just reminds me, like... I, I have heard rumors that um, Yakuza Kiwami 3 is a thing that is happening. And boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. My brain is just all kinds of excited about that news. I still need Knives to can kill, yeah, the... but, like, again, an RPG can kill a lot faster. I don't know. It has to actually be a uh, very good storytelling to actually break their heart. Yep. The fact that she threw the cat and it died means that she is stronger than her appearance shows. Well, I mean, you remember that uh, there's that one Easter egg where... If you walk up to the Empress and you try and hit the Empress, not only does it do nothing, but she immediately one-shots you. She will kill. <laughs> if Conductor tried to, like, fight her, no contest. Complete death. And also, Happy is here. Hello. Welcome to stream. Hey, well, you never know. What if the Conductor actually brought a pickle or a cucumber? Oh, shut the hell up. <laughs> She's cucumber. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. I don't have any bombs on me. So I guess that means I just gotta run around here and find the first dig, soft dig bomb. Hole. Dig, 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 dig hole. I am a dwarf. That's 3.10 p.m. Doing fine. Oh, man. They're gonna make me, like, hit the, uh, the difficult rocks, aren't they? Yeah. Yep. Looks like it. Okay, fine. Let's go. Still, oh. Whoop. Da -da -da -da. Whoop, there it is. Ah. Nice. Hey, how about that? Uh, okay. What level are we on? 118. I think there's 120 in total, so we are nearing the bottom here. And I think the, the final thing you collect is, like, a key to the, um... What was it? Like, the, the, the key to the skull cavern out in the, out in the desert? Basically, caves mark two. My cat isn't afraid of cucumbers and has eaten slices of cucumbers on my plate several times, by the way. Well, that's the problem. It was in slices before. <laughs> <laughs> you know, cat cannot recognize that it's a threat. Also, I love how <laughs> um, there was a misspelling. Uh, initially, cat was spelled as car. So it's like, my car isn't afraid of cucumbers. <laughs> I certainly hope not. The soulless automaton apparently is afraid of cucumbers. <laughs> How can you tell if it's actually just a regular automotive vehicle or a transformer? Place a cucumber next to it. <laughs> oh, exactly, right? <laughs> <laughs> Bumblebee just goes. Bloom. There it is. Sick him. He can kill with the train. Made it. Ta -da! Yay. I got the skull key. Meaning that I can go into the desert and do the crazy. Um, I forget. Have I gotten that rainbow prism yet? 
I don't know if I have. Oh, also, the Adventurers Guild. Have I done anything in here? Or, you know, is there anything I should mm -hmm. do in here? Hello. I'm here to talk. Eh, pretty much good. Come back when you got something new. All right. Okay, just checking. I, I, I forget whether or not I came in there at any point. Auto correct is funny because I don't have a car. <laughs> Maybe auto correct is just like, you know, predicting the future. Just like, you will one day have a car, and then your car will be terrified of cucumbers. It will not move in the presence of cucumbers. Oh, wouldn't that be awful? <laughs> you stop at a stoplight, and then suddenly your car notices that there's like a, like a cucumber, uh, cucumber patch in somebody's yard <laughs> and they're just like frozen with fear time stands still and all the other cars in the road are just like Meep! hey well pop in a manual and you just push it yeah pretty much push it real good i'm almost blind in one eye Ooh. now are we talking like you know just issues with uh you know, sight in general, just like developmental. Are we talking like, was this a, uh, and you don't have to answer this if you don't want to, but like, you know, was, was this like an incident where like y'all lost sight in one eye? Uh... Please don't tell me that you're in a trial cast of uh, a Batman movie. And you asked if you'd like to see a pencil disappear. Oh, no. <laughs> I remember that. Ta -da. That was freaking terrifying. Oh, yeah. Really pushed the uh, the crazy factor. Oh, oh I just recently saw a, a meme. Or, I think it was a meme. It was just a picture that somebody was sharing online. Um... I forget. I think there's a video game or something that came out recently, and uh, there's a, there's sequences where you can see the Joker without makeup on. <laughs> and people are see people saw that, and they were absolutely freaking the hell out because they're just like, "Oh, he's terrifying! He's one mm -hmm. he's two hundred times more terrifying without the makeup than with it." <laughs> Ooh, Caroline wants to buy a pumpkin. Sweet well, Caroline. Good. Well, Caroline, I'm currently doing pumpkin experiments here, so uh, you're going to be waiting a while. There we go. I have the power of train and knife on my hand. I have the power of God and anime on my side. Don't pick with me. I have the power of steampunk and references on my side. This is legit. Okay. Um, Don't believe I have any amaranth, but I think I can go buy some. Ah, it's a developmental thing. Only see through um, it if my other eye is closed. Wow, that is unfortunate. I guess, like, it. Uh, I mean, all right. Very few benefits with that. But the good news is that you can get that, like, medically tested and show this, like, hi, I'm, like, legally blind. Uh, therefore, um, you know, <laughs> can, can I get government check, please? It's like, I, I literally cannot work. Da 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 da. Or, like, you know, you're going to have to find work that's, uh, you know, that fits your uh, situation, I suppose. Mm. That's unfortunate. And also, really interesting. Um, I'm very fortunate that, like, my eyes have always been kind of crap, but they have been, like, a consistent kind of crap. 
You know, it hasn't tried to do anything crazy. Open the door. Open the door. Just there. Yeah, just stare. Just stand right there. Stare in. Go like. <sighs> what you doing in there? <laughs> no, 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 no. Terrifying. Conductor versus mustache girl. Um, is this, uh, is this pre, uh? Pre hourglass or post hourglass? This is an important factor. Post hourglass, mustache girl. Pre hourglass, conductor. Color thing is new. Uh, I was in. Oh, man. Yeah. I, I hope it works out. I hope you can figure something out. See, you know, one of the things that I'm really happy about. We are living in a, a time where so many, like, scientific breakthroughs are currently happening. And there are so many, like, medical conditions out there that we are coming up with, like, all new solutions that do wonders. Um, and I would not be surprised if a lot of the ailments that we're currently dealing with site-wise will be more or less, like, cleaned up within the, like, next 10 years. 20 at the most, I, I, I would say. I'm still waiting to actually see full cybernetic prosthesis. Yeah. They're, they're actually doing good for the arms. They're getting there. Starting to figure yeah. out, like, you know, how do you make brain talk to hand? So they're, they're, they're figuring out. I'm and yes, there are the, there are the awesome. current legs, but I, I'm more so saying a full on of, like, point of, like, cyberpunk. Ah, yeah. Cyberpunk I, mean, I, or I would like some Cyberpunk 2077. Yeah. Okay, well, I'd like Cyberpunk 2077 without a whole lot of like the the creepy corporate stuff. And we're already kind of there, <laughs> so can, can we can we can we like dial that back maybe? You say we're kind of already there. I got some news for you. They just need to come in. I'm scared. Yeah. Corpo, no. Corpo nightmare. Uh, what else was needed for? Uh, I think that's it. Clay, rock, copper, and a little bit of money, if I remember right. Just I want to a make little. Silo. There we go. Okay, so has timepiece. Mustache girl would definitely win. Because I, I, it doesn't matter what Conductor does. I think, like, you know, Conductor will ha have him completely floored by uh, Mustache. Just, like, either save scumming or using terrible powers. Okay, let's build another one. I think... Yeah, we can just build another one directly next to it. Should get my new laptop within this week. Tomorrow is going to be fun. I am working from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. <laughs> I pray for you. That is terrifying stuff. I think, like... I, I'm one of those those advocates of I feel like we need to go to uh, we need to go to a four day work week and we need to like significantly cut down like the nine to five bullcrap. But everybody needs to be properly paid a living wage. <laughs> I know <laughs> I'm being foolish. I'm aware. And I'm working 12 hours. Uh, oh, it's not every single day in a row. Work two days? Oh, two days. Work. Oh, wait, let me actually try to think a little bit harder. I'll go with this week, for example. 
Off two days, work two days. Off three days, work two days. Off two days, work three days. And then it cycles back and forth. <laughs> you versus the conductor. Um, yeah, no, he, he would immediately slice me and I'd die. But, no arguments there. Yeah. But would the knife actually harm you? I mean, maybe. That depends. We need to we need to like get concrete here. Am I a bubble or am I a bunch of water? I think I'm a bunch of water. Like that's that's kind of my uh, my canon for me. I, like you know, I say bubble man a lot, but it's more because I I have the visual look of bubbles. Are you like a boba bubble to where you just have like thin membrane when poking? Oops. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's something like that. Kind of like a bubble bubble. Bubba we need bubble? experimentation. We need, no. we need researchers. Back off. <laughs> I didn't agree to this. I didn't sign up to this. Making a bunch of human chains... Uh, well, oh, human chains in human fall flat with strangers. You know, I've never played that, but I've heard of it. Work on Mondays and Fridays and occasionally Wednesdays. He's nice. Well, I guess that... Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm hoping that whatever job you have, like, you know... Oh, train. Uh, I hope it really caters to the uh, the issues of sight that you have. I mean, you know, the fact that you say that it's, it's nice, I'm going to make the assumption that, yes, they do. Okay, how filled up are we on hay? Two oh one out of two forty, almost. Uh, Snatcher versus Empress. Once again, let's bring up the fact that Conductor uh, cannot actually be hit unless he is turned blue. So Empress is going to have to be able to do that somehow. Um, Empress does not have like, like they don't actively have a power that turns their uh, enemies blue, and. Empress will have to figure out on their own that that is something that, you know, that, like, that is a factor. The whole Snatcher has to be blue thing really does throw a, a wrench in the mix, though, let me say. Stock for a corner store, very much so because my mother is the manager. Okay, <laughs> this is fair. <laughs> Sounds like you have a pretty good gig at the moment. Um, how do I... Don't I have a button that allows me to, like, shift-click to all chests? I forget. I mean, I have add to existing <laughs> stacks, which is real nice. You should see uh, the latest uh, question by Doma Fire. Those are hard to read. Ah, uh, yeah. Bit, would you do a conductor plays since you have already done snatcher plays? This has been brought up a couple times, and I'm going to say for the record, I'm not against the idea, but before I do something like that, a few things have to happen. Number one, um, I have to be personally comfortable with being able to do the conductor impression on the fly, which I'm kind of, like, I, I, I can, but I'm not massively... Um, confident with that i personally would like to like improve on my scottish accent because it's like it's not really there um if i did that then maybe uh the other thing is that i would have to work out a plan or like i'd have to work out a way of doing the conductor's voice that doesn't absolutely slaughter my throat and conductor is a screamy boy so like, Conductor's voice is a sometimes food. <laughs> I do not do that often. So those are, like, the, the two main factors that would need to happen. Uh, two, I would have to come up with um, a good plan for a model as well. But, you know, I could figure that out, probably. I'm just wondering how the mouth would work. <laughs> it, it, I, th I feel like it would have to be, like, very Muppety. Uh, 
I was hired by the owner of the company after they learned that you help uh, your mom on occasion. Oh, nice. So they were just like, I mean, you're already here. Why not? <laughs> I like that. That's cool. It's like, you know, if, if you're going to be doing work for us, you might as well be on the clock. Yeah, we don't want to be known of just having random people actually working without being paid, even though we would actually really love people actually just coming in and doing charity work. <coughs> Honestly, I tried to draw conductor and I struggle with the mouth, so understandably for the mouth part. It'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to try and like figure out how that would work. Figuring out a way to like make the mouth move without like with all like the other uh, shape keys Ooh, e, I, o. yeah and making it like so that things don't like cross in between each other too often uh okay so i need this pumpkin patch to uh become massive pumpkin patch Sooner as opposed to later, please and thank you. I was thrown on payroll roll that exact day, and the company is family-owned. Yeah, you know, that sounds like one of those things that would only happen on a family-owned thing. That's another bit of info I did not know of. Yes. Boris, I know, there's been some stories... Of apparent like commercial family owned businesses or whatnot. But Mar mostly hear of good things. Hmm. I mean like family owned is good. It's just like <laughs> I I'm I'm trying to think. I uh I've heard I've heard of a lot of really good stories from people that say like, oh yeah, I'm working at this one place. And, uh, you know, like, I, I I can literally talk to the general manager. He's right there. He's in the back. And, like, those are kind of the best jobs to work at, in my opinion. Because, like, it doesn't require that much red tape, and you can go right to the person that controls everything and ask questions. And, like, usually the person that runs things cares enough that they don't want everything to collapse. So if you've got a problem, they will listen. So, you know, if one of their managers is being an absolute shithead... And if you, like, you know, give him the uh, the proof of the pudding and whatnot, they'll just be like, oh, yeah, no, you're right. They're wrong. Screw them. Um, you get back to work. This person will be reprimanded. You know, like that kind of thing. Good example of that. Um, I remember I was working at uh, that one, like, movie theater. And uh, at the time, I was like, uh, oh, I'm trying to remember. I don't, I don't know if I was, I don't think I was a manager at the time. Um, I was still like, you know, part, like I was all on the cusp of being sort of a manager type, uh, but not quite. And, um, there was this one person who was working there. Great employee. Don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not going to say that they were like some terrible, terrifying person or anything. Um, however, I was, um, I was collecting a bunch of popcorn for a bucket one time and, uh, Oh, I'm trying to remember exactly what it was. I think it was... What the... F Holy shit! Look at all these mushrooms! Mushroom, what does the look like today? Oh my god! Give me a second! All of the purple! Yes, please! Sorry, I got distracted for a second there. What were we? All right, okay. Um. Oh, two main owners, extremely nice people, and my mother had so many good uh, ideas for the uh, the stories that they are starting to implement. Um, oh, stories rather, actual media presence. Ooh, nice, good stuff. You versus the Empress with no gun. I, I'd still die. <laughs> have we we have discussed this? The Empress will kill you. Zero question. End of story. <laughs> anyway. Um, but yeah, no. So I, I was like, I was filling up somebody's uh, popcorn. And they had just gotten like a large size. So the way that I would usually do it is like, I would fill it up about halfway. Um, I would like do a nice layer of, uh, of butter there. 
and then I would fill it up the rest of the way, all, like, way past the brim, because, you know, East Movie Theater is popcorn. We want to give people, like, if, if, if you're going to be paying a stupidly amount of uh, money for popcorn, I'm at least going to give you your bucks worth. So fill it all the way up, butter the whole thing, and I handed it off to them. Uh, and I got, like, after they had left, um, they had, um, my, you know, the, the manager that was working at the time um, leaned over to me and um, I'm not going to say chastise. That's not the word. Um, I think criticize is probably a better word. Um, they gave me very critical input uh, in relation to the popcorn. And they said, like, you know, I was just like, hey, don't fill them up that full. And I'm like, what? And th th they were like, yeah, you really don't need to do that. I was just like, well, why the heck not? And they're just like, okay, look at it this way. Like, if you fill it up just like, oh, <clears throat> a little bit over to the brim, like, people will be fine with that. They're not going to complain about it. And, like, the best part is that they're not going to be dropping a whole bunch of popcorn on the floor, and they're not going to be making a bunch of messes that we have to clean up later, you know? So, like, you know, we're saving on a little bit of popcorn, we're saving on the messes, and we are... Uh, Solving a lot of problems by not filling it up that much. So please don't do that. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> After that, I went over to the owners of the place and I was just like, um, hey, I was told by uh, so and so uh, manager while I was working that, uh, you know, I was filling the popcorn buckets too high and uh, they, they told me not to do that. Um, is that okay? Like, you know, is that good advice? And they looked at me and they were just like, no, that's terrible advice. F forget what they said. Also, we're going to talk to them later. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, and they had the exact same uh, thought that I had. Just like, why are you nickel and diming people on the popcorn? Also, it's your goddamn job to clean up. Shut the hell up. And we have tools to clean up that stuff, too. And like, it doesn't take that much, like, effort. And Give people popcorn. Cheap. Like, people want to have their fun movie experience. Like, like, why are you, like, you know, being such a stickler on that? I think that, that was just a case of, like, they, they had one really good idea in their head that they were just like, yeah, I think th this would be a heck of a lot more efficient. But, like, it was not, it was not a good solution. And in general, it was just, like, really bad for, like, I don't know. I mean, in general, like... What, what do you think people would like to see more at a movie theater? Do you think people want to see, like, popcorn that fills, like, right up to the brim? Or do you want to see those, like, those buckets absolutely pouring over? Which one? And honestly, like, popcorn, not that expensive. Ain't gonna hurt anybody. Like, yeah, there's gonna be more mess to make. But again, we have so many different ways of cleaning. We have cleaners and brooms and vacuums and so many different and just like i think um oh i think uh, another thing we had there was like a leaf blower <laughs> <laughs> for those situations where there was just like a lot of popcorn that was just like in a corner and a vacuum wouldn't get it out so it's just like okay <laughs> industrial uh, <screw> this. <laughs> yeah it's like no the nuts on that manager <laughs> like i said they were a good manager. I'm not going to I'm not going to pretend like somehow they weren't. But like that was definitely one of those moments where they had this idea in their head. They thought it was the right move, but ultimately they were really short-sighted and not really thinking about the way that it looked. Like let people have their fun, you know. Leaf blower was only brought out in like, you know, extenuating circumstances, by the way. Oh, we also had like a backpack fact. That was fun. Like, you put that thing on, and then you just like, you know, walk through the theater, and like, it, it basically, it's almost like a mech suit. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I definitely came out here on a, uh, a lucky day. Apparently, I got some new ideas to sleep on. What does that mean? Game, explain this. Wait, does that mean that like I um I leveled up? Are are they just like conveniently telling me that I leveled up? Maybe. Movie theater mech suit. 
I mean, it wasn't a mech suit, but it's like you you put all this stuff on, and it gives you like a hose here, and you're just like, burp, burp, I am popcorn bot. <laughs> Conductor versus mafia boss. That one's harder because I feel like they um they uh, they are both equally as vicious. Hmm. Could Conductor survive Mafia Ball? I'm gonna go change my username on the account real quick. Okay, then. Poltergust 3000 from Luigi's Mansion or whatever it's called. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a pretty good description of it, yeah. The freaking Poltergust except for popcorn. My inventory's full. Uh, I have a lot of riches and cool things this time around. I think I want to... Oh, get out of here. I think I want to collect the, uh, the quartz. Okay, got an exit. And... So I love how I have a fedora and I'm basically Indiana Jones. I'm gonna be chased by a giant boulder. The boulder has conflicted feelings about this. The boulder has conflicted feelings. <laughs> uh, the what? boulder. Too weak to attack a game. girl. I think I should actually give credit to the boulder. Actually, he helped actually unveil the first metal bender. Oh, man, I forgot about that part, yeah. <laughs> there was actually a little thing that I had seen of, like... Uh, when Tuff actually uh, helps, I think it was like on the ship or uh, tower, there was a metal door. She just knocks on the door, just kicks the door in, rolls onto it, and just creates a metal suit of armor from it. The firebender should have actually just been like, intruder! Oh shit, intruder! <laughs> see, oh, see, let me talk. That would have been uh -oh, great. <laughs> Just watching Avatar. Avatar and one of the characters goes, Oh, fuck! <laughs> Uh-oh, I think I'm a goner. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> really? I'm heckin' yeah. dead. Oh, man. Oh, speaking of which, I just... um, So I have not really seen any other Avatar things aside from, like... I've seen some... A decent amount of episodes of Avatar The Last Airbender on Nickelodeon. That's about it. Um, good series, but I don't know. Personally, I have the attention span of a gerbil, so I I wasn't paying too much attention to um, watching. Like, I don't know. I, I don't do a whole lot of sitting down and watching stuff all that often. Um, though Avatar is one of those things that, yeah, if, if I had the opportunity and the time, I would do it. Now, um, I've heard a bunch of reviews and people that have talked about, like, you know, um, a bunch of different iterations of Avatar, uh, whether it be, like, you know, the live-action movie adaptation. What live and... movie? What now? What live movie? Oh, yeah, right. No, I, 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 think I, I think I had a fever dream about that. Might be real, might be not. I'm not entirely sure. Um... But you did hear that, like, they, they had a new... Was it live action? I think it might have been live action. I've heard... I think it was with Netflix that they're actually yeah. doing a live action series. Yeah. Um, um, well, you know, there, there's been some success in the anime field with, um, I think, One Piece's uh, 
animated sort of like you know live action series or yeah it, it is a live I've action heard, series yeah i've heard that it's been really good for people who have actually watched it i haven't watched it myself i but, couldn't say uh, because i haven't seen it myself and i'm not really massively into one piece so i can't accurately judge however um you know that success is kind of bolstering a lot of other companies to try and do very similar sort of things to gain equal success and oh hey question i can break through this right no never mind <laughs> i have learned that so uh, anyway um but yeah new new avatar and it uh i have heard that it is better than movie that which will not be named you know I, I i have heard that apparently it's a little bit better that being said not saying much because you could you could basically make a movie about a whole bunch of the uh you know i'm trying to think of an example you, you could make an entire um series about like nothing but ang sitting there and picking his nose and it would probably do better than the um you know the one movie <clears throat> um however hey level seven mining very nice new crafting but anyway, that, that's not saying much so like i said also uh there were some critiques that were released about it I, oh it says it's a snatcher <laughs> i think i see that is that a, is that a snatcher face i think so it looks very snatchery hello welcome back Yep, sweet. Don't judge, but I kind of simp for conductor. Um, I will not tell you what you can and cannot simp over. I'm personally not into that. But, you know. Ooh, it's gonna be raining tomorrow. Neat. And the spirits tell me to stay asleep, uh, you know, asleep today. But I will not. <laughs> it's a real snatcher! It's the real Buzz Lightyear. You're mocking me, aren't you? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. It's no, the no, real no. Light Buzz Year. <laughs> light Buzz Year. <laughs> buzz is not a flying toy. Look it up. Not it's a, a YouTube poop. Toy. Oh, my God. Oh, that was a YouTube poop? Awesome. Ah, YouTube poops. They're amazing. I oh, am yeah. James Bond 007. Boop. I am a Harry Philip. Boop. I am like <laughs> Buzz here. Peace out. Jesus. All right. Uh, now back to the Avatar thing. So there's been a critique that has been made from a couple of people. And you know what? I actually think this, this critique has a little bit of weight to it. The problem when it comes to people that try to make live action versions of Avatar or like people that attempt to retell the story of Avatar is that they try and truncate the story in the stupidest ways possible like the pacing of avatar for the tv series they did it in such a way that there was like a decent amount of time for character development and you actively got to watch as characters like grew and changed and like you know they they became who they ended up being and the the main thing that people are pointing out is that with these um uh, these live action things where they're just trying to like tell the story it's like they're trying to like skip to the good part or something where they're mm. just like well we need to get to the action man like that's what people are coming here for that's people are excited for the action and so like they <laughs> cut out a whole bunch of the character story uh, stuff and just be like ah eh, no we don't need it get that's kind of like... Where, like yeah we, we need we need ang to start doing crazy flips and acrobats uh, uh acrobatic stuff no, 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 no. We don't need these parts where people are talking to each other. Ew. No, 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 no. And I think that's actually a core element of why these are failing so many times. Like, we need a director that's not worried or afraid of putting in too much character development. Like, it, you know, we're, they're, they're kind of doing it from, like, you know, a, a movie standpoint. But wasn't that Avatar series supposed to be, a, like, just a basically episodic thing? Like, just make it episodic. Episodic stuff with people talking to each other is not a bad thing. Please. Also, many people are changing over to the Snatcher side. And I don't know whether or not I should be uh, flattered or terrified. 
I don't know if I like this invasion. This is scary. Oh, dear God! <laughs> Too many noodles. Too many noodles in the kitchen. Okay. How are we doing so far? Have I... Have I collected a bunch of feed? Snatcher, unite! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh, alright, well, I've got a full... So, I've got two full silos of hay at this point. I think I've done good. Like, there's still an entire farm of hay left, but one of these um, hay silos can feed my farm for an entire month, so I think I'm good. Your profile is Snatcher and Barnaby? Nice. Okay, let me drop some stuff off here. I suppose now that I've cleared out a whole bunch of the grass, it means that there's going to be chances for, like, trees to grow. Ooh. Speaking of, feel like I should knock a few of these down. Because they're starting to encroach. Why are you sleeping on the... <laughs> Insolent little bastard. Time to let the spray bottle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can water the plants at the same time. <laughs> just take the watering can and just pour it on a cat. <laughs> ah, yes. Perfect. Stra I'm staying strawberry crepe. So you're safe with uh, my wobble bots. Wobble bots? Wobble wobble. All right, it is Sunday. I haven't been paying attention to anybody's birthday, by the way. Oh, you've missed mine. Damn it. Oh, in game. <laughs> I'm not butthurt about it or anything. Is the dog okay? Dog? I dropped oh, an egg. dropped an egg on my dog. <laughs> wow, that's the first question you ask. Is the dog okay? Actually, wait a minute. No, that makes sense. Never mind. <laughs> Is the dog okay? Good question. For some reason in my brain, I thought you had flip-flopped it and said, Oh my god, is the egg okay? <laughs> my brain uh, caught up with me, though. I'm just like, wait a minute. Maybe. <laughs> dog might be okay. Questionable. Do I need to show you what Cookie Run Kingdom Wafflebot uh, enemy? Because I will without hesitation. I love it. No, that I'm good. Is included. I'm good. Though I am absolutely like uh, astounded that Cookie Run Kingdom is like gone as far as it has. Like, and, you know, there's. Good freaking God. Remember when I first heard about that and I'm just like, oh, well, another mobile game, whatever. And then, like, apparently people actually, like, really genuinely love the damn thing. So much so that, like, it actively still has a lot of support and they're still making stuff for it. And it's like, holy crap. Good for them, honestly. Okay, so we've cleared that stuff. I'm running out of energy, though. Shame you don't have some dynamite. Oh, can you cut down trees with dynamite? I don't know. <laughs> but if it could. <laughs> if it could, you should. Anyway, no, like I said, I think the grass was keeping a lot of the trees at bay, so... Um... This is about to be, like, a little bit nerve-wracking. Just a little bit. How long does it take for one of these trees to grow, by the way? Mm, yes. No. What he said. Because mm, I'm thinking, we, I have these, like, these trees right here. 
lined up in a really, really nice, comfortable row. Um, Pinecon, and I, I, it'd be nice to grow like a couple of pine trees here and here. Meow. What is it, buddy? What are you doing? Cute. Anyway, I've used up like all of my energy today on nothing but deforestation. <laughs> Yay! You did the slashing part. Now you need to do the burning. Right. Uh, that's what the wood is for. It's to burn the town. Yay! <laughs> Woo! Hooray! Uh, burning man. Stretch. You can't see my arms, but I'm stretching. I swear. Oh. Stretching more, and your head's gonna pop off. <laughs> it's gonna roll off your body. Stop. I'm watching this stream on two screens for some reason. Well, hello, screen one. And now I'm over here on screen two. <laughs> <laughs> there. Can you see me now? How about now? Go on How Twitch to see How if Twitch chat is broken. Look for strawberry crate. I mean, it's probably not broken. Let me see. Um, apparently, at some point, I lost about 156 frames. So who the heck knows when that was? Da, 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 da. Is anyone even online in the Twitch stream? <laughs> hey, come on. Let's not make fun of, like, you know, people that might be lurking in the Twitch. Okay. I can see that there are viewers in there. There is nothing wrong with just lurking in the Twitch chat, especially if you're chilling out and, like, doing your own projects. That happens. More people that just don't want to talk. There's another thing, too. And that's a good thing. That's an awesome thing. I appreciate people that are like that. Is that all you appreciate about them? What? What, what, what would I not... What else would I appreciate about them? I'm confused. <laughs> uh, that's a thing in Letterkenny. If you... Wait, what? Letterkenny. It's a Canadian show. As much as I have to, I have a slight possible built-up racism towards Canadians after working prejudice. at Samsung. Oh, prejudice, okay. that's right. I was just like, prejudice, racism, no, do not talk about racism. That is not a thing. Hey, I will at least acknowledge that uh, they are hat, and they also hold the record for the world's longest sniper confirmed kill. Uh, so, that is the most Canadian. Yes, and they were not sorry for that. Uh, okay. I think I'll keep those bok choy. And those, probably. Yeah, there's people on Twitch. <laughs> yeah, for, oh, I like there's a muffin. Hello, gang. So tired. Meh. Twitch chat is not broken. <laughs> okay, we have confirmed. Oh, wait, I want to keep that. Not that I don't need to. I have so much freaking hay now. Oh, that's a mood, though. Freaking tired. Yeah. I have been there recently. Uh, all right. Oh, hey, there's, there's little tree buds. There's one, at least. Uh, please grow fast so that, like, if I can get, like, six trees here lined up of, like, all of the exact same type, oh, that, that, it will be so, so nice. Hey, now, you're a rock star. Get your game. The other day, I was in the store, and they were playing Smash Mouth, and I was just like, what year is it? <laughs> <laughs> the heck? Like, I'm not gonna... Like, look, Smash Mouth's fine, don't get me wrong, but like, what? What's happening? Where am I? I forget, what's that one song, like, you know, 
You might as well be walking on the sun. Du, 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 du. Oh. So don't delay. Act now. Supplies are running out. God, they were just a feel-good attitude band, I swear to God. There is an official crepe shop for Cookie Run Kingdom in Korea. What? Seen images and... Ne okay. Never wanted to go somewhere so badly before. Interesting. Man. Very fancy. I mean, I would like to have a cookie run crepe, but I don't even play cookie run. <laughs> anyway, more de uh, deforestation. With an old, decrepit axe. Yay! Kill the oxygen! Starve the earth of its resources! Should I switch back to Fantokyo? It's on you. I guess it depends. Who truly lives in your heart? A demon noodle? Or a funny, uh, or funny Pinocchio? Conductor versus Mafia Bot. Wait, wait, did we? We asked that question before, didn't we? And didn't I say that's a hard one because both of them basically have like pretty even positives, uh, positives and negatives. Funny Puppet Gremlin. He is a gremlin. <clears throat> He's the best gremlin. He is the Michael Kovac gremlin. I drop that stuff off. And it is 11.50 a.m. and I am absolutely dead tired. Welcome to my life. <laughs> Here, let me grab this guy. Ooh. Trying to think of, um, oh, hey, since we got a whole bunch of people in the chat now at this point, um, I'm gonna, uh -oh. I'm gonna reiterate the, uh, conversation we had a little bit earlier in the stream. 3D printing. I was talking about this a little bit earlier, but yeah, um, the demons in my head won, and I bought a 3D printer. Oh right, yeah, the you showed it. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> um, let me go ahead and actually put it on the screen. You know, over here. Ah, oh, God, it's covering everything. Yeah. There we go. That's the thing. Yeah, I went and I got this guy, and you know what? They, uh, one of the reasons why I picked it up is that like 3D printers are pretty cheap nowadays, ridiculously. Like this thing, uh, 300 bucks, 300 bucks, and I was just I I got the thing. Now that doesn't include stuff like I had to go and buy the filament, and I'm sure I'm probably gonna have to buy some other supplies like stuff to adhere the uh, the printing bed and stuff like that. Good deal? Not really, <laughs> honestly. Um, for 300 bucks. You could DIY your own, and, you know, you could basically get the exact same thing. But for me, it was just a case of, like, I, I just want to get the thing, and I don't want to have to worry about thinking about it. You know, like, I, it, in the event there's any, ever any kind of, like, technical error with it, I just want to be able to call up a support line and have it serviced. I don't want to have to, like, do, you know, I can do a little bit of my own tech support, but eh, not for something like this not for something as like that's a good way to put it i don't know this is new territory for me like i don't want to do a whole bunch of self-diagnosis types of stuff if i can help it but anyway there we go no one of the things i was talking about though is that um oh my sister bought a cheap used 3d printer for her college projects but it broke after she finished said project ouch that's a shame Bought it used, eh? I wonder what was um I wonder what was the thing that ended up needing to be fixed about it. In Tardest. And also, when did that happen? 
Um, was it like a couple of years ago? Because like we've had a couple of years of um, advances in 3D printers up to this point. Still have it in storage. Mm. And like, what's broken about it specifically? Has it just like stopped printing altogether? Like last year, I think. Uh, okay, it's a little bit recent then. She never got into detail about it, so not sure. That is something that I'd be curious to hear. Because, um, yeah, what, what exactly makes it broken? Is it just not printing stuff anymore? Is stuff not adhering to the printer bed? Is it, like, does it get clogged up all the time? Uh, does it just not turn on anymore? Like, hmm. Many different reasons as to why. Also, I wonder, like, um... I wonder if this was, like, a, a pre-bought? You know, was this, like, was one of those things that, like, uh, pre-assembled? Or was this, like... <laughs> I, I, You know what? Considering the fact that this was a used one that um, she bought, I'm willing to bet it was probably not a custom build. Interesting. You can tell I've been doing a heck of a lot of research on this. I decided to buy this one because um, I've heard that Flash Forge... Flash Forge seemed to be really nice in terms of keeping things open source and allowing for flexibility. And for me, my, my opinion is that um, for an industry to really uh, flourish, I feel that it is important for at least the early stages of the industry to be as open and sharing as possible with everybody else within that industry. Because, like, if you start bogarting a whole bunch of the uh, the industry secrets, suddenly you have a bunch of people competing with lackluster materials and lackluster uh, product that, like, ultimately everybody doesn't want to buy because it's, like, too complex, too complicated, not enough benefits, and on top of that, like, there's just no synchronicity between everything. It's one of the reasons why I was so pissed off at Meta for, like, having exclusive VR titles. Like, screw you. <laughs> I get it. I understand. But, like, r right now, the VR sphere, while it's really starting to get, like, some good legs, I feel like we're not there yet. We, we especially weren't there when they made the exclusive store bullshit. Like, d d v VR games, if you can port them to other consoles, I feel like you should. Like, we need more people in the seats for these VR experiences and not to, like, fragment people up. That's my soapbox. And I have a similar vibe when it comes to uh, 3D printing technology. Like, it started out as funny hobby of a bunch of people that were taking pre-established uh, hardware and coming up with ways of, uh, of utilizing them. Uh, then it started moving into more of, like, it's more than just a hobby. A lot of people are coming up with practical and cool ways to use it. Uh, and now it is pretty much a consumer product that, like, you can go out and purchase. Like, you can go out to Best Buy and buy filament. <laughs> you know, like, we, we've reached that point, and it is beautiful. But I still think that open source um, philosophy is going to help when it comes to, with the making something like this flourish. But, and this is why I chose, uh, you know, um, yeah, that's why I chose Flash Forge, because uh, Flash Forge, they have been, they, they do allow for a lot of, like, open source software to work with their stuff. Like, they work with G-Code, which is literally, like, the, the bread and butter of um, 3D printing, as far as I'm concerned. And, as well as uh, there's a lot of different things that you can do with this thing that's, like, pretty flexible. And, like, if you know what you're doing with the printer, you can get a lot out of it. But, yeah, it's... But it is a whole bunch of... Um, it's it's a lot of things that have been prepackaged for your convenience. And you know what? I need something like that to get started because I am not jumping headfirst. Oh, I remember what this was now. It's broccoli. Hmm. Okie dokie. Anyway, I went off on, like, you know, 
random tangent there. And I feel like I, like, lost the plot several times. But let me get back to what I was going to say, though. Um, yeah, now that I have this 3D printer, does anybody have any funny 3D printer things that they would recommend? <laughs> I've had a few recommendations during the stream. Uh, I've taken a look at them. Some of them are, are entertaining. But if you got, like, you know, silly idea in your head about something that would be cool to 3D print, let me know. I'm not going to guarantee that I'm going to print it, but I might. Snatcher Crab. That would require me to figure out a few things. But like I said, it's, you know, I, it, I, it's totally, I totally did not already buy a whole bunch of purple and yellow filament in preparation for that at all. Shut up. I did not do that. Anyway, it's not like purple and uh, yellow were the only two colors that I really got that weren't gray. No, no, you're you're hallucinating. A kitty? Oh, yeah, like a, a 3D printed kitty. A <laughs> purple kitty? <laughs> I suppose I could. Conductor versus Empress, but Conductor has a gun. Has the gun. Um still think Empress is going to run up to him and absolutely slaughter him. Like, Empress Slaughter. is absolutely OP. Okay? Like, armed, very dangerous. Not armed, still really dangerous. Oh! Yeah, she's like by Ki over. Kibby, you mean Kirby. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Ah, interesting. Well... Kirby, Meta Knight, maybe. I'm sure there's probably 3D prints of them that exist. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah, Empress one hits Hat Kid. She wins. <laughs> no question. There we go. Day 22. Fall year one. Boy, look at all the progress we're not making. Wait, you're supposed to be progressing? Actually doing improvements? Oh, that's weird. You're giving a house for free. Ooh, we got a lot of luck today. Um, How much? I do have like six magma geodes I could crack today. Sure. Oh, any of the other ones? Hold on a second. I'm... No. No, okay. Progress. Never heard of her. Uh, okay. I think there was something else 3D printing-wise that I wanted to talk about. <gasps> oh, I just remembered. Oh, I got a funny freaking story for you. Ooh. Hey. <laughs> Anybody want some broccoli? If the answer is anything but no, get out of my chat. I'm kidding. Broccoli as is... I'll hand it to someone else. Broccoli is yeah. not a vegetable. It is a flower. Shut up, Happy. Jesus, there's so... Look at all the... like. We got corn. We got broccoli. We got grapes. The day is insane. You can make wine. You can make whiskey. You can make... Broccoli salad. Broccoli salad. <laughs> I, I, I don't like broccoli. There's only one thing that I hate worse than broccoli. It's Brussels sprouts. And I think it's because of the, the way that my mom would always prepare them. I think I, I forget how she prepared them, but like it was not good. It's funny, like that that's the way that she would love to prepare them though. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Grilled Brussels sprouts. I don't think I've ever tried them grilled. I forget how my mom would make them. Conductor versus Death Wish. Okay, now we're getting esoteric in here. Um. Anyway, I uh, know I got an interesting story for you. Uh, I might actually have to pause to go and uh, grab these pictures. Because they be funny.
Give me a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut down the rest of these trees over here, and then I'm gonna get into a funny story time. I like funny pictures. Look at this. It almost looks like I have a proper farm that hasn't been taken over by nature or anything. There we go. Anyway, I don't remember if I posted it in, um, uh, like, okay, I know I have them on my phone. Oh, also, other question. I need to make sure that, like, whatever pictures I show do not show any addresses. Don't dox yourself. <laughs> I, I will do my best not to. Okay. I don't recall ever uh, uploading these to anywhere, so here. I actually have, like, a test Discord server that I use to just, like, noodle around. And I also use it as, like... Oh, yeah, I did upload... Okay, I did upload these over to that Discord. Okay. Well, give me a sec. I'm gonna I'm gonna go inspect those real quick. Give me a second, guys. Pardon my stardust. Okay, this picture is fine. I got a lot of pictures up. Give me a second. So many. Oh, and also I got the live stream up too. Get out of here. <laughs> I don't need that on this computer. Go away. Now this this story is gonna be interesting. really selling on this one <laughs> there we go um i don't think this had an address on it or anything it has like it has a barcode on it for like you know identification i think in the factory but i seem to remember that like this box came in um a much larger box with a whole bunch of little boxes in it so i don't think this barcode is anything to worry about but out of um, pure paranoia, I think I am going to, like, quickly doctor this up. Like I said, probably not even worth it, but eh, I'll do it anyway. 3D print bit Kirby. Oh, well, I don't have a 3D bit Kirby, but that actually could be, um, that could be arranged eventually. Okay, there we go. And now to do a funny little sensor. There we go. Ah, no, don't don't save it as that format. What the heck? It is going to be good. All right. <laughs> also, what's this picture over here? Well, oh, I must have deleted this picture at some point. Oh, I'm missing picture of Kitty. Oopsies. I must have deleted it off my desktop for some reason. Oh, okay. Well. clear that out story time <laughs> story time with the bit there we 
we go. Bit Kirby sounds simple enough to test with. Yeah, possibly. I mean, you can easily just, like, get a Kirby model and then 3D print it. Um, glasses are, like, a, a complicated one, though. I'm still trying to figure out, like, what would be the most um, effective way of printing 3D, you know, printing glasses. Sounds like a little bit of a mess. Just a little bit. Okay. So, um... So my plans for making uh, this like whole 3D printer purchase uh, kind of went like this. I wanted to get the 3D printer itself, but also I wanted to get uh, a lot of gray filament because I wanted to have like a, a filament that was good for just experimenting. Nothing super serious, and that's what I have been using as of recently. But on top of that, the other thing that I bought was, um, I think it, it's called like burnt titanium, which is like a purpley kind of thing. And then a gold silk um, color. Uh, so all of those were pretty much what I got. Um, I think in total, three, four, about like five. Yeah, I think like uh, five rolls. Which, by the way, I found out that apparently one of these rolls lasts freaking forever. <laughs> if you're not like 3D printing constantly... And if you're, like, really efficient with your uh, models and what you're printing, they can last a long freaking time. Oh, I think I know where this is going. <laughs> oh, do you? I, I guarantee you, I don't... Okay, well, depending on whether or not you've, like, messed with 3D printers, maybe you know. Maybe you don't. We'll see. Uh, but anyway, so, um, yeah, I went and I, I, I purchased a whole bunch of these things, and I waited for them to arrive, and I, uh, I bought them via Amazon. And uh, they arrived, and it was a whole bunch of the really good stuff. Conveniently, um, the all the 3D printer material showed up on the exact same day as I got the printer. So, hey, hey, timing was perfect. Everything is great. Except for one thing. One of the boxes that I got looked particularly scuffed as hell. Um, here, I'm going to show you the picture. And unfortunately, we're going to have to, like, you know, upload them and shrink them several times. So, yeah work with me here here we go anyway uh okay i'm gonna i'm gonna cover myself up here so here we go i bought this brand here which i don't endorse i don't support i'm just like i don't even know if it's a good brand or not i just decided to pick it up because it looks like it's ubiquitous and it's all over amazon so yeah this is what the look of a brand new box looks like and here's the box that I got that also came in the uh, the big old box of boxes. And I was like, that doesn't look right. That's weird. It's like the other one, except um, massively scuffed. And so immediately I was worried and concerned. I was like, hmm, okay, all right, very curious. Also, I'm fairly certain that that's like that looks like a handprint. That looks like somebody's greasy hand grabbed that box at some point. So, like, yeah, this this doesn't look fresh. I, I don't know where the heck this came from, but it's definitely is is not good. Someone touched it. <laughs> I'm fine with people touching my packages and all that jazz when it comes to mail, but, like, what in the hell? Uh, so, yeah, immediately I was concerned about that. So then I opened it up to um, inspect it. Now, again, I was taking pictures all throughout this process. Oh, also, the box was sealed using just a, uh, a, like a strip of basically packing tape, whereas the other boxes were like properly sealed with like... I'm trying to remember exactly what it was. Actually, funny enough, I don't know if it, any of the other ones were sealed because they didn't need to because like they were fresh and brand new boxes. They don't necessarily need to be... Uh, you know, taped up at all. Somebody violated that box in a major way. So anyway, uh, I opened up uh, the box that had the, um, you know, the filth on it. And uh, I set them side by side to compare them between like a brand new spool and a, uh, you know, a the spool that I ended up getting. And here is the comparison. Here it is again. We're going to start out with the um, the normal one. 
So to start out, here is what a brand new spool of this stuff is supposed to look like. So, um, fun fact, this material works at its best when it is not in a, uh, a highly moisturized environment. So they vacuum seal these things and they put a little silica gel packet inside of it so that it uh, sucks up as much moisture as possible so that it doesn't affect the overall quality of the printing material that, uh, you know, that you are getting. <clears throat> what I got was this. It's a, a, a bag. It looks like it was a bag of printer filament from somewhere. Uh, but it's only a, like, it's basically one of those zip bags. Definitely not airtight. Didn't come with any kind of, like, you know, silica gel at all. Very curious. One other thing. You know how, um... You know, we're, we're looking at these, uh, these reels real quick here. Like, you can see that, um... Or we can, we can go ahead and... Okay, hopefully this doesn't spoil anything, but, uh... Okay, good, it doesn't. I'm taking these pictures on my bed, by the way. That's what my bedspread looks like. I need to get new bedspread. So, comparison. Here we go. There, There is... Oh, give me a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. Uh, I don't want to spoil it. Anyway, so yeah, there's the reel, and that's the burnt titanium color. Looks pretty nice, right? Looks cool. Um, let's take a look at the reel on the other one. One of these things is not like the other. One of these things just doesn't belong. Can you tell which one is not like the other by the time I finish this song? I think it's the one on the left. Correct! <laughs> um, yeah, so like... No, and also, by the way, there's a reason why I'm showing the other one for comparison. That one is supposed to be the exact same color is not it's gray and also very clearly this reel has been used before and you'll notice another thing too i mean it's clearly a different um a, a clearly different shade obviously but there's another thing that i noticed as well so we got like take a look at the airy one logo on the uh, the new filament that i got very fancy very stylish very neat very cool um, however, if we look at the other reel, not only is, like, the color of the reel slightly different, you will also notice that the logo is significantly different and much more simple than the new logo that they are currently using for their company. And you'll notice, if we go back to that previous picture, you'll notice that the boxes that we were looking at have the new logo on that one. And a new logo on the, uh, you know, the crusty box. So here's my theory. My theory is that there is somebody out there that runs a 3D printing company. And they ordered a new, a new box of burnt titanium. And then they got it through Amazon. And then they sent a complaint to Amazon saying, Oh, gee, sorry. Uh, I think we bought way too many of this color. And we're going to send it back to your warehouse. My, our bad. And then Amazon went, oh, okay, sure. Uh, we're going to give you a QR code. Just go ahead and ship it back to us and, you know, whatever convenience you have and uh, everything will per be perfectly hunky-dory. And then what they did, what I'm assuming, is they took one of their old rolls that they had used up pretty much most of it, didn't matter what color it was, took it, shoved it into a plastic bag they had sitting around, then shoved it into one of the cardboard boxes that they had sitting around, and then sent that back off to Amazon. And so they managed to get themselves a free copy of Burnt Titanium and got rid of one of their old reels, scot-free. And um, I don't know whether or not Amazon has any sort of a system in place to try and catch people that do this kind of thing. I'm assuming they probably do. But this is bullshit. <laughs> like, holy fuck. That, yeah, definitely sabotage. Did you return it? Hell yes, I returned it. 
<laughs> well, not yet. I haven't returned it just yet, but I do have the QR code and the next uh, chance I have to go out to like a UPS store, I'm going to be sending it back. Um, but I have like made my return, uh, I've made my return like query with, uh, with Amazon and I've told them that I'm going to be sending it back, which is funny because they really took my word for it. And I don't know if it's because I have a good reputation with them or something, but um, they have kind of just taken my word for it and said, Oh, yeah, sure. Well, okay, we'll send you a new one. No problem. And I already have the replacement roll. They've sent the replacement roll. I have it. Um, my, so my guess is that there is somebody out there who's running a very crooked business out there who is taking full advantage of the fact that Amazon's uh, return policy is extremely relaxed. Which, on one hand, I think that's really filthy and it's really scumbaggy because that ends up affecting people like me on the other end of the uh, of the sphere. You know, like, now I gotta have to deal with the frustration of having to go to UPS store and drop this thing off so that I can get my proper spool. Screw you. On the other end of the coin, I don't like Jeff Bezos. So... <laughs> you know, I, and also, I, I know every... The, the hustle is real <laughs> and if you're running something that's like you know making you some level of money i think i can like i guess my my thoughts are they're not really trying to con any of the end users they're more trying to con amazon and amazon has an absolute like surplus of money and you know jeff bezos is like a multi-billionaire so <laughs> ah. can't fault him really don't care that much like make your bag i guess i i'm of two minds on this one hate and love at the same time i don't know i have temu filament it has been the best one that i've used and i'm confused well you know i'd like to think you'd like to think that like it would be very difficult to fuck up filament <clears throat> but hey who knows Yeah, I'm not getting a refund. I just asked for, like, a full-on replacement of the thing, which I have already gotten. So don't worry about that. But anyway, yeah, that's story time with Bit. That is the funniest goddamn thing that has happened in terms of, like, shipping snafus in a long time, and it is freaking great. But anyway, um, hopefully that doesn't happen to me anytime, <clears throat> anytime later. Uh, I, I will say... It's very convenient that I already bought a bunch. Like, if this were different, if this were in a circumstance where I really needed to get this filament right now, and, like, I had, like, a specific project that needed to get printed sooner as opposed to later, I think I would be more angry with this. But because I'm just sort of, you know, I'm noodling around right now, and I'm starting to, like, I'm kind of wading into the, uh, into the waters, so to speak. I'm less upset. <laughs> Honestly, like, doesn't bother me that much. It's, it's probably good that, like, I, um, I'm the person that ended up getting it and not somebody who really desperately needed burnt titanium. So. Uh, anyway, we're going to store this broccoli. And that, and now we're going to go out to Clyde's. 100% transparent and glow-in-the-dark filament that's speckled blue. Oh, yeah, that one. <laughs> so, okay, so you told me that it comes from Temu, and the first thing I immediately think is, are we sure it doesn't have radium in it? It's like, I don't know. I feel like Temu specifically would probably have less, like, you know, they'd probably be very relaxed when it comes to anything related to, like, health policies, like... <laughs> Have you have you taken a Geiger counter to that thing? <laughs> I don't know if you have one or not, but like, you know, it would not be a bad idea, is what I'm saying. Chaotic story time. That's not super chaotic. It's just interesting that like, I kind of I accidentally stumbled into a, a, a weird 3D print psyop. I guess is a good way to put it. I don't know. It's like, ha ha ha! Yes. We will trick Amazon into giving us free, uh, you know, free filament for life. <laughs> Bitch, should I have a Snatcher or Fantokio profile? Ass on you, man. 
again, go with whatever your heart tells you. Um, go with you, go with you. Ooh, got a thing. What do I get? Oh, yeah, the... Man, I hate the rare crows. <laughs> rare crows are stupid. Show different two different types of waffle bots in the image share channel, by the way. Doggo one is adorable. Uh, let me take a look real quick. That's weird. I yes. I like I, I like waffle but beep boop. Waffle beep boop is good. <laughs> So cute. All right, let me grab this stuff. Oh my god, I've been streaming for ten hours. Actually, not ten. Sorry, three <laughs> hours already. If I do a stream that's ten hours long, by the end of it, you're, I'm pretty sure I will be deceased. Ten oh, hours. Mm. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh, would you look at that? Oh jeez, Oofta. Oh, cheese and crackers. Crepe Dragoon is an enemy and I hate it. Uh huh. Uh, let's drop off that. Yeah, see, I don't know. There's much value in some of like the uh, the base materials in this game. This rare crow can get bent though. Jeez. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, you can go on Google and, like, just say flip a coin. Heads? Tails? Yeah. Okay, wow. Th these things have to grow sooner as opposed to later, please. Da -da 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 -da. Well, I guess we'll get... cut down some trees. I know a child made those bots in a... Uh... Mid-level era. Wild as hell. What? Wait a minute. Oh, really? So that that's like lore-wise a child made those? That's kind of neat. Child labor robot. Here we go. Ugh. I'm looking forward to when I can finally upgrade this thing. Technically, I could. But, like, I'm going to wait until the winter season. And that's when I can put a whole lot of my, uh, you know, massive personal upgrades into full effect. I do need to make sure that I keep some money so that I can buy crops and things for the uh, following season, though. Or I just need to have some, like, major hustle. Hey, what are you guys up to right now? Uh, system shock. Ooh, cool. Checked out my apartment. I got a game break. <laughs> what? Is that from System Shock? Yes. The game. <laughs> Freaking. Uh, reminds me of the um the game sphere. Oh. Not enough energy. <laughs> Living on the edge. All right. Ah. Hold up. <laughs> I saw my cat splayed out on the path here. What are you doing? cookie that made them was in the photo with the waffle doggo. Oh, nice. Made them out of boredom. Frickin' smarty pants is going and making cool things. How dare they. So I suppose, while I'm, uh, while I'm currently doing stuff here, let me, uh, I pulled this picture up a little bit earlier. A couple of pictures. 
Here. Couple um, 3D printing successes so far. I have managed to make the boat. You know the one. The one that every single 3D printer needs to make at some point in its lifetime. I made the thing. Though, I'm looking at it. And I don't know if, like... Is it, like... It, uh, so I, I, I'm not entirely 100% sure. But I'm taking a look at the... Um, the overall sort of, like, print quality. In terms of, like, you know... The layering and whatnot. And I don't know whether or not this boat was uh, made with, like, you know, this shape in mind. Or if this is a... You know, the, the, is this, like... What, what's the what's the word? I don't, like. I'm having such a hard time of uh, d describing this, uh, but it almost looks like some kind of a. Oh, you have to sand your 3D prints to actually smooth them out. Well, technically you could do that, or you could just leave them be. But um, no, I, I wondered. Th there's some really weird sort of like divots and creases and things. And technically speaking, this is supposed to be a wooden boat, so. I don't know whether or not the it's a wooded texture thing or like so is this waviness inside of the front of the boat in you know was this in uh intended or is that just my printer having issues with uh you know making a straight line uh i'm honestly not sure about that because like then i see some other examples of like you know other parts too like the, the doorway seems a little bit iffy um I don't know. I just like I I feel like if this is all supposed to be super ridiculously smooth, <laughs> I am a little bit concerned about the fact that it's a little bit off. Um, the only thing I'm thinking is that like it could be a vibration related thing. You could use uh, you could check the 3D model. Well, actually, technically, I could um I could offload that model and uh, take a look at it on my PC. It actually came stock with my 3D printer, so. Um, I could do that. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not 100 percent on whether or not those particular like imperfections were intended. Is what I'm saying. Um, yeah, I might. I might take a look at that. Because here's the thing: I do have some other 3D printed related things, and eh, they're pretty good. They're pretty straight in a lot of different ways. So the you know the the weird wooded texture thing or the inconsistent texture of the boat might be intentional. Um, although, again, this thing vibrates like a son of a... Um, I ended up trying out like three different surfaces to set it on before I finally settled on the, uh, the surface that I chose. And the surface that I chose, I chose it because it is like a hardwood, like immovable object, basically. I was going to say, did you choose stone science desk? Uh, <laughs> stone science desk. I should. I should just get a gigantic stone slab. I do. Hmm. Interesting. Now, most of the uh, the furniture they have sitting around here is like Ikea level kind of stuff. <laughs> like, you don't want this thing sitting on that because it's going to vibrate it to hell. I even tried it on, um, I tried it on a metal filing cabinet, uh, which I think that would have worked, but the problem is this room has got shag carpeting in it. Um... And the shag carpeting is making it so that anything you set down on this carpet is going to do a little bit of a wiggle wobble. 3D printer's a little nervous. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I can understand. There's a lot of pressure. All right. Here's another thing that I'm going to tease here. Um, I talked about this on the print, you know, er, earlier in the stream. Uh, anybody who was here earlier for the reveal of this, shush. But I want to do a little bit of a guessing game. Can the people, the newer people inside uh, the stream, can you guess what it is that I'm printing here? I'm looking for a specific answer, though. Pizza. That's that's a little bit more specific. A little bit more specific than that. What's the pizza from? I'll give you a few hints. Um. If I were smart, I would print this in a red color. Because this is supposed to be the red color part of this 3D print. 
And this print is it's done in three stages with three colors. One is red, one is uh, green, and another one is yellow. And they are all like flat color. Where do you think this comes from? Can't guess because I was there. <laughs> mm. I mean, you could. You just ruin it for everybody. This is true, yeah. <laughs> you could technically say whatever you want. And ruin the whole experience for every other person in this room. Is it from Pizza Tower? You know, funny enough, I think, Shoop, you were the one that actually guessed. Yeah. Like, you were like, is this Pizza Tower? I'm like, no, but not a bad guess. Not quite. I think it'd be funny to make some Pizza Tower uh, 3D prints, though. I think that'd be funny. Has anybody made, like... I'm gonna have to look into that a little bit later. Also, 12 o'clock. I should probably go and sleep. <laughs> Hold up. Actually, you mentioned a sleeping game. I'm gonna feel more asleep in real life, which is a rare thing. Yeah, I know the feeling. Ooh. Um, probably so. a good idea. It's like 11 o'clock here. I'm going to hop off, so goodbye, people of the internet. See ya. Okay. Sleep well, Shoop. Yep. And here's a farewell. <laughs> Frickin' noise. <laughs> do, I know, do I right? have access to that sound effect, by the way? What is it, and who uploaded it? And in what server? If you find out, you must tell me. No, I'm pretty sure it's just, it, it's in one of the random servers that Shoop's in. Uh, the only thing... Yeah, I don't, we, we haven't uploaded anything to, um, to our private server. All, all, all I have is, wait, no, no. All this is in our private server, it's this. That's great. Me too, says Muffin. Anyway. Alright, you guys have had enough time to uh, guess what this is. It is... Bum, ba -da -dum, bum, bum, bum. Lego pizza! Hey! <laughs> it, it's the red part of the Lego pizza. Take a look. Except it's giant. It is a giant Lego pizza. And I found the 3D print not too long ago. And I was just like, that is me incarnate. That is mine. <laughs> I want it. Let's go! I think you mean Lego! Yay. Yeah, it's going to be a gigantic... Uh, yeah, gigantic Lego pizza. And I'm looking forward to it. There we go. I have so... So far, I have printed two parts of this. Uh, I have printed... I have printed the the you know the, the the little green um parts on the top of the pizza and I have printed out the sauce. And the sauce was well, both of these have given me like different variations of frustrations. I ended up going for the raft option to print this thing, meaning that this thing is so intricate and frustrating that I basically said, "You know what? Screw it. I'm having trouble having all this stuff uh, adhere to the print bed so I'm just going to go ahead and make a little a literal raft of the plastic material because the plastic material does a good job of like you know connecting to itself so I was like, I'm just gonna make a bunch of the plastic material and then like I'm gonna I'm gonna print everything that way technically it did work it worked famously only issue is that I I didn't know this at the time but Getting all of the plastic raft off of the back of these things is obnoxious as hell. And, um, whoopsie doodles. So, uh, I, yeah, I spent a, a good afternoon just taking all of the individual slices. Like, I, I got them all sitting here in a stack. I, I took all of the individual slices, um, and then I meticulously, like, took off 
individual little hairs of the background until eventually it, you know, got all cleaned off. I wonder if, yeah. there, if there was a different way I might have been able to do it that it would have come off more cleanly. I don't know, but... Your, your Honor, my client would like to claim whoopsie-daisy. Whoopsie-doodle. <laughs> That's a fucky wucky right there. Mini to big pizza. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude. I, I, I played a lot of, like... First of all, played with Legos when I was younger. But on top of that, I played a bunch of, like, the, the Lego computer games and stuff like that when I was growing up. And, like, Lego Island was just... It's it's kind of a personality for me at this point. <laughs> so, like, yeah. The, the ability to have a giant pizza in my hand. I like this idea. I like this concept. I subscribe to this idea. Yes. The fact that I'm a mod for the official... Um, CRK Discord was a bit of a... Dr oh, really? You are? I always wanted to be a bit more helpful in the community, and when uh, mod applications opened, I took the leap and uh, got chosen. Now, the question is, if you are an official mod for that server, um, are you... Now, I don't know whether or not you're under some weird NDA or, like, not allowed to say. Do you get paid? If you are a part of, like, an official Discord server, and if you are doing a, like, heck of a good job with, like, a large sum of people... But, you know, you could have, you could be volunteer working for it. That's not a bad thing. But it's an extra bonus if they do pay you. No? Eh. Oh, well. It's fine, I guess. Again, massive benefit, especially if, like you said, if it is an official server. Uh, I think we're going to call it for the stream, but before we're done, let me go out and take a look at what our farm is going to have for us. Ooh, hey, this stuff's done. Oh, and conveniently, it happened on a Wednesday. All right, sweet. Um, okay, still working hard on getting these um, these pumpkins done. What's this here? Oh. Dear Bitby, ordered too much fertilizer, said Jody, and then handed me fertilizer. Interesting. I will eat your farm. Once again, I am going to resist this. I am going to pr try and protect my farm from this. Probably eventuality. Anyway. Uh, tiny, humble farm. Look at it. I don't remember when I um, finally get access to like the, the super quality... Um, sprinklers but i do remember not only does it like you know in increase the area that you can uh plant crops and things but on top of that like i don't know it just feels more industrial i knew one of the devs from uh fright fest wait while too i think the fact i i did well in helping with fright fest helped oh very nice you ate it Still sitting here. I don't see it gone. Unless you put some sort of a weird mirage here. <laughs> it looks like it's... It looks like everything's all, up, you know, accounted for. No. <laughs> it's still here. It's not messing with me. I'm trying to remember. This is, um... This is like the, the, the fairy flower, right? How long does it take for these things to finally get made jace uh still waiting on the okay right well we're gonna come back to that uh sometime later maybe next week we'll see i mean hey <laughs> to, to, maybe two streams in a row where i actually do gameplay mm, crazy stuff and right, i'm gonna head over to the end screen and we'll talk about some of the plans for next week now again probably gonna chill out do the uh, the Stardew stuff again. Unplug my tracker. Uh, and oh, also we are playing through Splinter Cell. No idea how much more of that game there is. I I kind of forgot just how long Splinter Cell was. Um, gotta imagine that we're getting close. But also on top of that, there's DLC missions that I like have not dug into in such a long time, and I don't remember if they were any good. <laughs> I remember, like, I, I got really excited because I'm like, oh, my gosh, more Splinter Cell that I've never played before? Whoa, holy crap. 
But I don't remember whether or not it was any good. God, I hope it is. So yeah, that's happening on Wednesday. So if you want to watch me, like, be all nostalgic for this one Ubisoft game that, like, basically was a, a formation of my childhood that makes me sad to know that they don't, like, care about it anymore. Hey, you can watch that. Um, so that's happening then. Also, oh yeah, on Saturday, we're starting to, um, wind down on Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Like, we are pretty much in post- post game territory where i'm doing the supposedly uh the final um the final tournament stuff we'll see how that goes i don't know i'm still laughing about the fact that it's like it's literally called tournament z <laughs> like for god's sakes man um and i think that's about it i have some other games that i currently have like on the docket for me to play and i'm really excited for those but i am currently waiting until we finally, uh, you know, get done with a few games that we already have currently in our rotation. There we go. Let me turn off the hand. God, you know, another thing that gets super ridiculously hot while I'm streaming, um, the iPhone used to capture my face. This thing is freaking nuclear. Like, the, the edges, the edges have got to be definitely above, like, 120 degrees. <laughs> or so it, it 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 gets warm, it gets spicy. I just hope one of these days the camera just doesn't set on fire. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, anything else that you want to add, uh, you know, Mister Kyle? Nah. Nah. Well, actually, what are you currently doing right now? Oh well, I was just getting ready for bed. Just got got out of uh, system shock. That's fair. It is getting pretty late here. I'm going to start winding down myself, too. Um, oh, but actually, before I go, um, here's one other thing that I was I was going to talk about on the stream, but I forgot about. Um, so 3D printing is neat, and I had this vision in my head that, like, maybe if I've got a specific 3D print that I have a lot of faith won't end up screwing up in the middle of it, maybe I can, like, leave it running for an extendedly long period of time. Uh, there's, I think the crust for that pizza is going to take somewhere around eight hours, if I remember correct. Um, which is a scary amount of time. But, you know, imagine, like, you set it up before you go to bed, and then you get into bed, and then you pass out, and then you wake up, and the next morning, you know, magically, you you've got a pizza, pizza crust! <laughs> right? Like, suddenly pizza. And I thought that'd be a really cool idea to do, but um, I've I, I've since realized that I don't think I want to be doing that for uh, the 3D printer for a number of reasons. One, it's probably not very safe. Morning plastic pizza. Oh, what? Hey, hey, you, have you have you ever heard of having leftover pizza for breakfast? I mean, it's imagine it's basically that, except with plastic. Okay, whatever. I don't see anything wrong with this. Um, but no, a couple of problems with this. N number one, I have seen all manner of failures happen with this. And in, in theory, a failure of a 3d printer isn't really going to cause much aside from, okay, well, it might get into the servos, which would be very terrifying. Um, but yeah, I mean, for, for the most part, a failure basically means that yeah, you're going to end up having to clean up a mess. So it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. It, it would be ideal to check the printing process. Uh, the other problem, and again, this is the one that I didn't really account for or think about, um, the smell. <laughs> like I said, uh, this thing is kind of within um, eye shot of where I sleep, and uh, that's not good. Like, I have air purifiers and filters and whatnot, and I have air circulation, um, but at the same time, I feel like that isn't something that you want to be sleeping through. You know, that doesn't feel healthy or safe so um i i've kind of i've made the executive decision that for my own health and for my own safety it would be best if i didn't decide to set up basically a fume machine um and the only the only time i would ever do that is if i would uh heated a filament fumes mm, delicious uh the only time i would ever do that is if i had the um adventure pro or whatever it's called 
that basically the one that's like a fully enclosed 3D printer that has HEPA filters directly built into the device. Um, because you know, at least then I won't have to worry about those uh, those fumes getting out. But yeah, I mean, oh, and also for the record, I, I would like to say f there is no immediate uh, proof or like study that has been done to show what extended periods of being around 3d printer fumes does to you aside from it might give you a headache that's that, that's the main thing um i'm kind of crossing my fingers that there isn't i mean i'd like to think that there isn't anything super uh toxic about it especially since like you know i'm currently working with material that is advertised as being non-toxic so Long-term effects, who knows? But I am definitely, um, you know, keeping tabs on just how much fumes I am putting into the air. I'm, I'm being responsible with this and making sure that I'm putting myself in as safe of an environment as possible. I'm sure you probably don't care about that. <laughs> you're probably just like, yeah, yeah you're, you're probably fine. You're probably safe. There. Okay, uh, enough about me just, um, you know trailing off and talking about random gobbledygook i'm gonna take off here so thanks for coming out everybody and uh thanks for talking <laughs> ah, thanks for talking kyle fumes fumes jesus i i need to go to sleep or rest so yep. catch you later me too bye, -bye.